This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, get ready to get dialed in. It's The Matrix. I'm Andrew Jupin. Mr. Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. And we love movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Love Movies. Thank you for tuning into the program. As always, that's right. This week, we are capping off We Love Movies Month with The Matrix from 1999, directed by Lana and Lily Wachowski. One of the fucking all-time bangers, I gotta say. It's a masterpiece. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Kevin's going fucking techno crazy. I'm sorry, crazy. I just have to give us our, 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 the soundtrack the bangers, for, for yeah. the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, it's also very similar to that. To the DVD Let's just <laughs> start doing like some karaoke of Marilyn Manson right now. Oh, no. <laughs> How about, any, how about we do anybody else? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Fucking uh, Rob Zombie's on this. Yeah, Rob Zombie's that. Dragula, a yeah. Banger of a rage needle drop at the end. Maybe the best ending needle drop. It's it's on there. It's, it's a big one. It's quite exquisite. Like it. Like how often do you leave the theater like just ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, just get fucking your your expectations dashed by two movies. Yeah, I will say I think the difference between these the this movie and its two sequels can really be said that the first two end with Rage Against the Machine needle drops. The third one is this big choir horse shit. Like, yep, that's well, your problem. <laughs> well, see that—that's how humans sing, Chris. They use the uh, operatic choir voices. Sure. And computers do blah, 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 you know yeah. the the reg, you know the first movie soundtrack. Am they, I do, the, they do a bomb track. Am I the only one in the room that has not gone back to the other two since we did our last episode on Res on Revol the la revolutions? Revolutions. Yeah, I watched uh, all of them uh, over Thanksgiving. Reevaluated it. I thought I was going to start reappraising, maybe liking those sequels more, but it just didn't happen for me. Same here. I did. I watched this one first for our fine program here. And then I was like, let's just keep going. And I barreled through. I did three nights in a row. And I, I'm kind of in the same boat as Eric. I think I actually like the second movie a little less because, man, on 4K especially, those fucking graphics of him flying around look dreadful ladies and gentlemen I, and yeah. the third movie is just not for me all I, the fucking war for zion shit i do not I, have interest in it i i rewatched all three i think all of them went up one star for me and i don't think it's gonna go from there i think yeah. that's the end for it yeah uh the last one specifically it's so uneven that movie yeah. drives me insane because mm -hmm. like it yeah. conclude like the big climactic moment happens about i would say a little after halfway through the movie well, is re over. Reloaded doesn't even have like a resolution. It's just like it's just like to be continued. Yeah. Insert disc two. I guess, <laughs> it, guess, ends, it ends on that shot of a dude you don't even remember. I yeah. guess years of being like ground down by Marvel shit has made me a little bit more forgiving of shit like that. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. I, I watched them in 2015 and I trust 2015 Steve's <laughs> reappraisal and I'm 20, cool with that. 2015 Steve was just all right. <laughs> exactly. And before we get too far in 2021 i want to hit play really quickly oh, oh, yeah it's oh, the vhs fuck. trailer game could, uh, could someone pull me out pull me out of the matrix <laughs> totally get, i need a fucking operator to get me out of here i it's will cold. leave you in i will leave you in <laughs> <laughs> this is how it's gonna go it's the vhs trailer game uh america's favorite game about obsolete materials i am your game master steven sadak and these are my clues we are here in the studio. We actually, there's a little bit of a, a wrinkle here, but I'm not. Uh oh. The way I think that we're going to do this, we haven't talked about this off air. Uh, we did do a live VHS trailer game this month in our amazing Bell House show on Chud. That's there, right. Yep. There are points on the board, but I think we'll definitely release that episode before the end of this season. So I'm going to let those points are going to come to that, that or those players. When we release that episode, does that seem? I fair think to that folks? makes that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. By those so, players, right. you mean Andrew? 
Yes. And, and, and Andrew. <laughs> Don't spoil it for the people who weren't at the show. That's what I was yeah. trying not to do. Uh, well, Chris, but fucked it up. But uh, so right now, <laughs> Eric Siska has a monumental lead, uh, which is exciting. Wait, monumental wait. lead. You, Steve, Jay Master, do you think that I might be the one? You might be the one. You, oh, you just right. see that movie. Yeah. When I start talking movie trivia, you just see numbers and zeros and shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, the first season, everyone fails their first season. Exactly. <laughs> So the way this is going to go is I'm going to give these gentlemen five clues. Uh, the first one was five points, and then they go less than that. Uh, Game Master's Game Master's Clue, Tribute tribute Trivia, IMDb Tagline, one star of the film, another star of the film. Uh, if you guess within that round and you get guess incorrectly, you are out until the next trailer. There are four rounds, ladies and gentlemen. And Ooh. I do want to be clear about one thing here. I am going to be a stickler because I think some of these, some of these might be easy. Some of them might not be so much, but I want full titles. If there's subtitle, I want the oh, subtitle. Jesus Christ. And, oh. and, and what, I am I the, taking the SATs here? <laughs> I think the last one specifically. <laughs> I don't want to hear, oh, it's that one that went like that. Like, that's not the answer okay. I want. I want the title of the movie. Okay. I don't think you've ever accepted that kind of an answer. I know, but it's just, you know, I want to be a dick today. So there you okay. go. Fine. <laughs> You're off to a good start. <laughs> So, uh-huh. All right. round yeah. one. Here we go. Game Master's Clue. Uh-huh. Part of the late 90s TV to movie craze, this movie, a period piece of sorts, was much less successful and memorable than the titular song that spawned it. <gasps> Chris Cabin. My Dog Skip. It is not <laughs> my dog Skip. Wow, it's there's a song choice. about that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, could you could you say the clue again, Steve? Sure. Uh, it's part of the late '90s TV to movie craze. Okay. This movie, a period piece of sorts, was much less successful and memorable than the titular song it spawned. <gasps> Andrew Jupin. The Mod Squad. It is not the Mod <laughs> Squad. Eric Siska stands alone. Yeah. Do you want to move on to the to another clue, or do you want to hear that one more time? Well, the, the thing is, it's just like so. It's. TV show to movie, but the song was a hit. Is is the yes. vibe I'm picking up yes. here? Yes. Uh, uh, let's move oh, on. Oh, motherfucker! Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, you got, you got this son one. of a fucking bitch. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna be glad to read this tribute trivia, which was on the IMDb tribute trivia uh, on the IMDb <sighs> trivia. I want to be clear I can't about believe this. It. I can't believe it. <laughs> this movie is yeah. featured in episode 257 of the Bad Movie Podcast. We hate movies. Dude, no, we made the trivia trivia. We did. How about there? that? Well, I can die now. Uh, Shit. I can't, and this only confirms that what I have in my yeah, head is yeah. absolutely yes. What is so exists. fucking great about that is like, now I'm, now I'm even more stumped somehow. <laughs> uh, TV I can, show I'll give you a second. Movie we did it as an episode. episode. The number doesn't help mean anything. I don't know. The problem happens. is it's virtually unknown that this was a television show. Yeah. Ah. That's what makes it a good tricky question. Yeah, that J Master. He loves his <laughs> tricks. All right, let's move on to the next one. You know, if I just get by with one point, that's okay. <laughs> exactly. It's still a win. Uh tagline, it doesn't get any wilder than this. How does that not help? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> People are screaming in their cars. Which I we know they are. They always are. They're so smart. That's what I love about our audience is they are very, very smart people. Mm-hmm. I'm Everybody. about to be screaming in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, start number two. If you're if you're ready for yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it. Kevin Klein. Oh, Wild Wild West. It is the there Wild Wild West for is. two big points Ooh. for Eric Siska. Wicca. Wow, wow, man. Now I'm, that is pathetic. I should have known that. <laughs> See, I fell into, I was thinking like, it, like the theme song of the TV Got show, it. yeah, somehow was a big thing, man. Yeah, Wild Wild West was right but there. That's, I mean, yeah. that song was huge uh, from the Millennium, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. Wicka Wicka Wild Wild West. Dude. Uh, Absolutely. All right, <clears throat> round two, Game Masters Clue, a sequel to a surprise 1997 comedy hit. This one takes uh, our lead and his catchphrases back in time as he woos a new leading lady. So it's a prequel? It's a sequel. He takes there's time travel. I want uh, sequel with oh, time travel. A sequel to a surprise 1997 comedy hit. This one takes our lead and his catchphrases. 
Austin Powers, Powers, Powers the pie, the spy who shagged me. That is correct. The pie yeah, who shagged me. Not the, the pie. That's that's, that's the Weird Al song. Yeah, uh, that's me over the holidays. I was going to say that's Jason Biggs yeah. in American. <laughs> Well, you know, if it, to be fair, I fucked up the title if you want to die from the No, 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 that, that, that was a quick one. I uh, didn't fuck the pie, Eugene Levy. The pie <laughs> fucked me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll forget that he goes back in time in that one. It's been a long time for me to, in The Spy Who Shagged Me. Spy, oh, yeah, he goes back to the 60s, and yeah. it's like Rob yes. Lowe instead of Robert Wagner and Fat so Bastard on and so Bastard finally forth. makes mm-hmm. his appearance. Right. Fat Bastard drinks his own feces in that movie, if I remember does. correctly. I rewatched the first one during quarantine. Fun and movie. I like it, yeah. It's I did really not funny. go through the rest of them, though. No, because they just do the same fucking jokes. Yep. All right. Round three. All right. Game Master's Clue. One half of a bankable comedy team struck out on his own for the first time as a lead here, this time as a dog net. Chris Gavin. Lost and Found. It is Lost and Found for five wow. big points. Yeah, man. That movie is sad as fuck. Now, what is it? it? Is. Who's, who's the... It's David Spade. Oh, okay. It's Spade. Uh, that's and sad. It yeah, that's is. really sad, right? If I recall correctly, they insert Artie Lang into the fat friend yes, role in that they movie. Do. Yes, they do. In the trailer, it's uncomfortable because it's like, it's a big joke because, like, Artie Lang's like, I want to be like you, boss. And he's, and like, he gets his hair dyed to look like David mm-hmm. Spade, but that just makes him look more like Chris Farley, which is kind oh, of uncomfortable. Oh, God. And, and apparently a, that, that role was written for Farley, and, you know. Yeah. And, uh, have, you know. They have a French uh, actress. Yes. Uh, Sophie Marceau, is yes, it? Yes, I think it is it's Sophie, Sophie Marceau. Marceau. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I rented that movie precisely one time, and I <laughs> kind of remember a little bit about it. There's wow. like, some sort of climax takes place in like an open amphitheater of some kind, if I'm not mistaken. I never There's saw like a cello it. player. In I've never seen right. it. I just remember it sucking. It's really bad. <laughs> What's with all these comedies doing on the Matrix? I, I, I was shocked myself. Uh, and well, we're going to actually, we'll talk about that because I actually have a theory about this. <laughs> Ooh, I like this. All right, last, last oh, I round. see because you, uh, you watched the VHS with Steve. Before yes, we did. did. <laughs> You're the, you, dude, you got two in a row. Yeah. <laughs> While that lost and found poll was impressive. If, uh, even if Eric wins, he will never win. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, would you have known the name lost and found or would you only have kind of been like, oh, it's the one with Artie Lang? No, if I got to like, oh, so what was the Tribune trivia for that one? The Tribune trivia for that was the dog. Uh, the dog in this film is a Norwich Terrier, and then the next piece of trivia was the dog in this film is actually a Karen Terrier, as they have longer tails than Norwich. So uh, no, no, it probably would have taken me to the <laughs> yeah, cast. Yeah. Got it. Uh, okay, so last one here, uh-huh. <clears throat> round four, Game Master's Clue. A TV movie that tells the acrimonious relationship of two tech titans. Ooh, ah, uh, oh, 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 ha. Ah. Oh, I fucking know the movie and I know part of the title. Exactly, Son of a exactly. That's why I said it. Bitch. I knew this was going to be a trouble. Oh. Christopher Cabin. The Pirates of Silicon Valley? It is the Pirates of Silicon wow. Valley. I knew Silicon Valley was in yes. the fucking title. It's Noah Wiley and who? Uh, Anthony and, Michael Hall. It's Anthony Michael Hall, yes. And who? And they're, they're playing what again? Gates, Gates and Gates. Uh, Jobs. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. sounds familiar. Fuck. It is, uh, at least I knew you know, the movie. Even if there was, even if I had a perfect VHS trailer game, <laughs> it's something my primitive cerebrum would be constantly <laughs> trying to wake up from. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, Andrew gets fucking killed again in another round. <laughs> oh, it's tough. Oh, it's, there's plenty of games to play. <laughs> there are. Yeah, we're, we're, we got a whole. We're going through August, guys. So we'll we'll definitely have enough room for everybody to to get in there once uh, Andrew <coughs> hacks my mainframe. That's oh, I'll hack your mainframe. Definitely, just get in it. there and figure it out. <laughs> uh, well, so this is it's the Matrix. Another, yeah. where do you start? Well, I so what yeah, do you what's your theory well, here with all so, that? Okay. So at the time, Erica's right. There were a lot of romantic comedies. They were everywhere. Where are romantic comedies now? Nowhere. Mm. Or they're being made by Netflix only and they're just like awful. And a lot of them are truly abhorrent. Like, cannot be watched. Yeah. That's uh, true. But also like Austin Powers, it's kind of just like a big box comedy. Yes. Mm. I but I kind of think the Matrix was a turning point away from uh those kinds of movies as the movies were making. Well, because that's- 
I grim think dark cells. Yeah. We start the early aughts is when you start seeing them ta- taper off, like we, we uh, taper off, like it's just yeah. not happening anymore. Hmm. Because this opened what I think two weeks after she's all that, uh, yeah. and the same week as Ten Things I Hate About You, which are two of like the last of those types. Okay. So and this destroyed like this is this goes on a I think twelve week run. This yeah, movie at number at one, the top. yeah, yeah it, it goes on a really long streak. It's an interesting huh. theory because you think about like something that Mary came out and like the, all these like big nasty comedies, which I mean did, did they didn't go away just because of the Matrix, no, but like they were huge money makers because they were so cheap, obviously, and you just sort of just raked up money. And I was, and then, yeah, yeah, and like, then they started developing shit like Starsky and Hutch or whatever, and started yeah. losing money trying to adapt all those yeah. TV shows and, and shit. The, well, and then everything got put dead on a halt when lord of the rings came out and then we were just dealing with attempts to make that kind of movie again it, for that's, years that's kind of interesting i feel like so much of yeah it's it, been like just chasing lotr oh yeah, not like a, not like fantasy though right there wasn't a lot oh, of fantasy. i mean yes they've been like trying to i mean like this got renewed with game of thrones now they're trying to every, every fucking book series there is they tried they to do it with that do. golden compass movie and yes. it, oh, fucking, it, compass, it bankrupted yeah. new line cinema entirely it, well, that, that was, was part say, of yeah. the, the, that was part of the craze of like let's take big books and try to do them as big movies that was when you lotr start, and, and potter are the same year and you start uh, potter, that's when you right. start hearing about watchmen they're trying to yeah. finally do it yeah and yeah. of course that crashes and burn until so i mean this is interesting that like the Matrix is such a good brand new IP yes. that everyone starts trying to resurrect old IP. And then we find ourselves in, I mean, I do feel like we're in the Matrix. Like we're at the 99, kind of the height or some, you know, yeah. arguably. I mean, good good year for movies. Yeah. 1999 is one of the best years for movie, period. Yep. And period. now it feels like nothing has, it feels like I haven't lived a day <laughs> since that, since 1999. Well, well you're, li- does... you're living in hell. Uh, uh, yeah, that's... I guess that's the problem. Yeah. Speaking of the film landscape, can I say that I remember very clearly because a, mo- a little movie came out about 40 some odd days after this one called uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And if that's you right. asked some fat little son of a bitch named Steve Sadak which <laughs> movie was better in 1999, he was like, well, the Matrix was cool, but that lightsaber fight, you just can't beat it. <laughs> you, just, you, just can't, you know what I mean? And like, I was making yeah. all sorts of excuses, and I was, for some reason, very worried about the Matrix stealing uh, Phantom Menace's thunder, which wow. it did, which you it would, absolutely yes. did. Uh, of oh, course, yeah. yeah. You would think I, I would have that opinion, but I remember not having that opinion. I remember being a bit of an episode one apologist for a mm-hmm. while, but I always thought that there were better movies that year. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was one of those years. I, this was like the year I was like, oh, I like adult movies, too. Mm. Like, uh, I remember I did like, uh, or like, I, like it, I just was overwhelmed by them. I remember doing a doubleheader of Fight Club and Bring Out the Dead the same oh, day. Oh, man. Ooh. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, and like two of my favorite movies till this day. You guys saw this in theaters, right? The Matrix. Oh yeah, big time. I did not. Oh really? I was really? Friday oh. opening night. I did not see it in the theaters. I. It was one of the very first blue uh, DVDs I ever owned, and I went ape shit with the rewatches. I think I had rented it on VHS before that, mm-hmm. uh, before I owned it, and then it. I don't think it was part. Remember, like when they first started DVDs and it was like, oh, if you bought a DVD player with this player, you get like five yep. free movies to come oh, with it yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. A bounty. And like the Matrix may have been included in that because also, speaking of which, fucking Austin Powers' Spy Who Shagged Me definitely was. Yes. That was one of our first ones. That's why I've seen that 30 times. I've seen this 30 times. I've seen the first Shrek movie 30 times. The South Park movie was one of the first ones. Yep, I had that. Yep. Well, this movie made a ton of money in theaters, but uh, I was looking up today. It sold 30 million DVDs. Could you oh, yeah. Wow. Could you fucking imagine that much, that much money? <laughs> Christ. 30 million DVDs. Like, do we... There's no way we moved units like that. No, I, I can't. I, know, I Blu-rays. can't imagine. No way. No, it's not in the age insane. of streaming. Even with, yeah. Yeah, even with Marvel, you would think people would begin to collecting. I don't think they are. Marvel's really terrible about like releasing stuff. Like they're very weird about like what's on 4K now. I think all the movies you can get on Blu-ray at least. Yeah, and yeah. I think they're now starting. It's the same with Star Wars though. Like they're just starting to push it on 4K, but then you look at the reviews of the discs and they're like, these are all basically just Blu-ray transfers that they put on. Yeah, of fucking, course, you know. of course. <laughs> so wake me up when they put the Ernest's out in 4K. <laughs> hey, Vern, <laughs> I'm crystal clear. 
Uh, I do think the the opening of this movie is it's very instructive because it's just a very cool uh, shot of you know the Matrix, the whole like the drippy the code. code thing, and you're having this conversation between uh, Carrie Ann Moss and Joe Pantoliano, and it's already horny. Like immediately, yep. Oh, yeah. yep. Joe Pantoliano's like, "You're watching him, aren't you?" And she's like, "I like to watch him." Like, "Oh yeah, this movie." <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, oh uh, yeah. Uh, what, what are you doing in that fucking operator chair, Trinity? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing steamy? while you're watching? Feel a steamy over there, Trinity? Huh? Mm. <laughs> mm. Just I'm watching an absolute... you watch him, and I'm touching myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just an absolute. Smoke show cast, by the way, oh, a yeah. lot of sexies floating around. I mean, this movie. even Joey Pants. I mean, the the bald with the goat. It's kind of working. He's looking at this good, time. and he's got cool glasses. Yes. Be, I mean, he's one top hat away from asking you to throw a ring on top of a bottle for, for <laughs> tickets. <laughs> but, uh, you know, conversely, he could be the cool guy at the record store. Sure. That, Step right know. up. You look like a, you look like a handsome customer there. Win uh, win something for your lady. <laughs> you want this stuff? Girl? Now get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Take another couple baseballs to the bottles. Let's go. Yeah, he could. I got fun. I'll take my fucking baseball. Get the fuck out of here. Get your fucking powdered sugar fingers out of here. Now, I just want Joey Pants yelling at kids. Can we get. I know Billy Bob did it exquisitely, but some sort of like pseudo bad news bears kind of movie where where Joey Pants is just yelling at children. I'd I love would it. be into that. That'd yeah. be great. Angry coach, we can just call it. A real bummer. Yeah, I, I just we keep talking about him because he's so good. We, we we also talked about him in our Memento episode, also WLM on the Patreon zone. Oh, yes. Um, he's just not around anymore, and he's so fucking good at he's everything. So fucking good. I mean, in this, I feel like in this movie, rewatching it this time, you know, the smoke show cast, of course, but you did need like a weird character actor yes. in that mix. Yeah, yep. he's. I mean, he's the, not. He's not the only one reason why the sequels are inferior. He's so important to this movie. He lets the air out of the balloon a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas the rest of the movies are puffing up the mythology and puffing up the gravitas. You yep. kind of have Joy Pants here being like, why you? Why did I take the fucking blue pill? Jesus yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. Like Christ. a skeptic. Like that's, yes, exactly. And he's, he's a, I mean, he, he has big Peter Lorre energy. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can From see the that. beginning. Like, and he's just like, his delivery is so good with some of these lines. <laughs> these letters of transit are signed by Agent Smith. They're good to get out of the matrix. <laughs> Which is interesting because that's a thing they start dabbling with in the third movie. Yeah. But they're so fucking concerned about this war for Zion shit that that really cool idea just goes completely yeah. away. See, the thing with the those sequels is they focus so much on Zion. I feel like a lot of that CG budget went to the Sentinels, which look good. But everything else suffered in those sequels because of it. I Dude, think. him flying around like Superman in that second movie, the big... Yeah. You like keep it. the schoolyard fight with him and all the agent Smiths. It looks awful. It does. I, I guess I just have been ground down. Like to me, even that looks better than like the meticulous, like neatness of Marvel movies. When like the, when they have their graphics come up, it, like it looks more ostentatious now to me than it does back then. Uh, than I, back then. <sighs> it just looks chunkier and like crappier. <laughs> The, uh, sure, yeah. I mean, it looks like a screensaver in a bit. I think Andrew, you had an interesting idea on text last night about why not a special edition? Why yeah. not amp up these graphics? Sure. If the Wachowskis wanted to go back to those movies, like you wouldn't need and, to do a ton for the first movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be. I don't want to give Lucas any <laughs> way of getting out of well, what the, he did. The genie's I don't out want of the him pointing anywhere. God damn it. I, I, yeah, but at least I don't know. You could at least say like, like use that as a reference point. Like, look at all the ways in which he fucked that up. Yeah. Now we won't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I watched this on HBO Max. It looked great. I love yeah. this opening sequence with Carrie Ann Moss, a total unknown uh, who has, I believe, and I did some math here, influenced the sexuality of 70% of the people I like uh, in the world. <laughs> 75, possibly, if you so were the, born, the, between, the, if you were born the, between like 1981 and 1996, <laughs> she has influenced your sexuality in some way in this performance. That's I buy true. It. That's true. So the thirty percent is like your parents. And stuff. <laughs> exactly. Like my dad is like, ah, what's that lady doing? <laughs> and it's it's <laughs> it's such a rad setup too, right? Like she comes into this building, you see her walking in, you don't really know entirely. What's, that's what I love about and I it, like watching it now, like for the show. This opening scene still like whew, 
reminded me of the first time I watched it where like you don't if you went like it was kind of impossible to go to this movie called in 99 but like if you forgot kind of how it starts now like you go into it she's there and then like this fucking security guard or whatever is like talking to agent Smith on the phone and just the whole sequence of no lieutenant your men are already dead and it cuts to her she does the fucking hanging kick and I, it was again, like having my mind blown for the first time, just that the memory of like, oh my God, like what am I, what, this is my first exposure to any kind of like wire work fighting yeah, th- stuff. This one makes me anti-scroll because yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. I'm so happy with how they unfold, how the world yeah. works within the movie. Right. Like I could just see them putting on like. The year is twenty one ninety nine. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. That's fair. We are yeah. all in this piece of shit matrix. Dropping you right in really yes. helps. And yeah. I, I feel like um, if they did a scroll, it would be maybe it would be too similar to Star Wars in a way because it's like it's sort of the hero's journey. This cl- this classic hero's journey. Morpheus is sort of a Ben Kenobi, but this is like before Star Wars. This is like Joseph Campbell shit. Yeah, yeah. and they and they do such a great job of a she destroys these dudes. <laughs> oh, does she ever? But they do a great uh, world building of like, oh fuck, an agent is here. She, you know, she starts freaking out. Yeah, that great shot of her jumping through the window. And Dude, doing, yeah, she does the like torpedo jump. It's incredible, and then landing with the guns. That's such a badass shot of her landing with the guns pointed at the window and then has yep. to do that cool like i gotta psych myself up because i'm fucking terrified of these robot men it just does <laughs> it does so much work in like 90 seconds and those effects re- hold up i oh, feel like man. none yeah. of the cgi is really bad in this i feel like it's just more bad in those sequels maybe because they're more ambitious or whatever it's really just the all the flying i yeah. think and in the third movie the fucking the mech suit dudes when you're looking at the person from yeah, fu- oh, that's, yeah, that's that fucking terrible that, that is tough to it's follow. really terrible but even in that second movie like the second movie kind of starts the way this one does where she does the cool motorcycle thing and she throws the motorcycle into like the parking garage thing and the whole thing blows up and she lands and does like it's the, you, you seeing her die it, the vision of her dying that's the, right yeah, yeah and all that stuff that whole mission yeah like it's it's fucking rad but yeah it's just the stunt work Absolutely incredible. I love the dive across the buildings. They gave, I mean, I'm sure you're right. Like, they gave, uh, well, I'm going to fucking butcher his name, uh, Yun Wu Ping. Yen Wu Ping. Yen Wu Ping. Yeah, they gave him every fucking, like, they, he did not want to do the movie. And they were uh-huh. like, uh, please. He's like, I need complete creative control over these scenes. And they're like, sure. He's yeah. Like, oh, oh, okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> sure. Okay. Now yeah, I'll like, do it. <laughs> all right. Like, fight choreography legend Yen Wu Ping. Like, Yep, let's do it, dude. Come into this movie. And taking out wires and doing jumps, pretty easy thing to CGI and help out a little bit yeah, instead yes. of creating that's, a whole new characters. And that's, shit. Yeah. that's what I think I, I, like, I don't mind about this. It's because it is still like, and why I find like Marvel and all that so ostentatious because it's everywhere in those movies. Yeah, it's the whole and movie. It's, it's everything. And like even in The Matrix, which does have a lot of it, it's still not everything. You've no, got totally. some good sets in this movie. Yes, Great and this and in, yes. It awesome. was before, I mean, it's funny because, like, all of episode one is fucking green screen, the motion picture. Yeah. But, like, it was before that was just, like, commonplace, like all of these Marvel movies are. So, like, you still were blessed with, with like, these movies where you do have sets that were built and they look really great. I love, like, she gets to the phone booth and there's, like, the truck that's going to ram her. And, like, you can see, I think this is the first time you're sort of made hip to, like, Agent Smith can transform, like can like yep. hack into people, which is cool. He can fast travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can fast travel. That's right. <laughs> and he hacks the truck driver and drives the truck like into the phone booth. But you see that she, you know, got out because the the agents come up, and this is where it's kind of like a quick blink and you miss it line. But the one guy says to Agent Smith, like, "Oh, well, by the way, confirmation that the informant is real." Speaking of Joey Pants, we learn later. Uh, and the next, yeah. their next person they're going to is Neo. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is a, a weird, like, you do, it's, it's a line I never remembered that they, like, that they set up that they they have a traitor, on, a mole on the inside immediately, yeah. you know? Yes. Yeah, no, I actually didn't even notice that until this time around. Yeah, it's a great detail. You know, it's surprising, actually, that, like, I think Keanu Reeves is great in this movie. Yeah. It's I feel like it's surprising he's even in it, given uh, Johnny Mnemonic or like or maybe the I thought maybe the studio would have apprehension about that. I mean, they wanted everybody else. I mean, they, their Will, big want Will was Smith. Johnny Depp. 
Will Smith almost did it. <laughs> oh, wow. Will Smith was very close to doing it. But just, their big want was Johnny Depp. Now, that was Smith, the person they wanted. He came up in the VHS trailer game there. What the hell's the deal with that guy's career? Like he could have, he must have just been turning down some good projects. I mean, he he he, yeah. he said that like full on he didn't. It was I didn't get it kind of a thing, and it was the biggest regret he ever had. I do right. think that like you you need Keanu in this. It's yes. that yeah. sort yeah. of spaciness that the, really sells it. Honestly, the Wachowski flavor is not going to come out with him and the in the foreground yeah Keanu it's gonna become a Will Smith movie yeah Keanu you could buy as a hacker like Will Smith is he he's you can tell he's doing going through the motions I bet but absolutely but but what you're saying Chris I think is totally right because like Keanu I think is able to just kind of like mesh in and make it like a team player thing you're right. Like if it's Will Smith, it's a fucking Will Smith movie. Any big cat. I mean, like you. I mean, you have. Th- this is almost unbelievable. I I still can't believe they got this lucky with the casting that they got. Like Fishburne is also like just just big enough a star that you can like put his name there. Yeah. But like he's uh, he also has the gravitas. I can't imagine anybody else playing Morpheus. I really cannot in my brain. Like, oh, no, like no, Fish- the idea that Sean Connery was going to be Morpheus. <laughs> <absolutely>. <laughs> That's what I wanted to bring up, though. I- is that true? Because I was reading another thing that, that said just sounds he, like Ramirez now. He Connery. passed on the architect in the second yes. movie. Oh, that's uh, what it was. Yes. Okay, but yeah. I mean, they wanted every. It was originally because I think they were very, and the Wachowskis were very smartly conscious of like wanting to make this movie as kind of diverse as possible in terms of right. casting. It was going to be if it was going to be Will Smith, and they wanted a white Morpheus. They were thinking Val Kilmer. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's but amazing. I think that nobody does the professorial thing that the scary professorial thing that uh Lawrence Fishburne does in this movie nobody else can kind of hack that he's almost gregarious in scenes like it's mm. a very uh, uh, incredible tone he hits i like w- when he gets the cell phone and he's like <gasps> Morpheus and he's like yeah <laughs> as if he's like a warrior spirit from Zelda about to give you a special shield cuz it kind of is you know it's yeah. he's going to help you enter this whole greater world i do i love i love it i love the the tone he hits i mean he does a great job at balancing like you know he like morpheus internally has to be so fucking giddy because he's like this is the one neo neo is the guy and i'm talking to the guy yeah. oh i'm talking to- but like it's all like i have to play this cool because if i fuck it up i'm gonna mm. scare this dude off and he's not gonna want to do it so it's like it's restrained excitement in a way, like restrained yeah. enthusiasm. Weird yeah. John yeah, the know. Baptist energy. Uh, like yeah. just fucking <laughs> total nutbag waiting around, knowing like everybody thinks you're, you're hot. Sh- like, oh no, wait yep. for my, you're the hype man for the real dude. Who's one on of his the best, way. One of the best roles in the Bible, I will say. Absolutely. And, and one of the top you, ones. You give me Larry Fishburne as fucking John the, ba- John the B, I'm into it. So we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So after the car, uh, the truck crashes into the phone booth, we uh, cut to uh, Neo, Keanu Reeves, post jerk session in front of the computer. <laughs> oh, dude, absolutely all of his energy sapped. sapped. Dude, Massive so attack, fucking blaring on the drip, fucking drip headphones. on the floor coming yeah. out of his dick, still out of his pants. Massive attack was who I could not remember on last yes, week's I was episode. wrong. Dragula is the second Beetle drop. Yeah. And you've also got, uh, he's also, he's doing that. He's just close to port window. He's got two MMOPRGs going. He's got a couple of campaigns <laughs> active. Like, you have to be really burned out or, like, fucked up to pass out with your face, like, on a keyboard. Yeah. He, he but it's pretty tough. That's his life, though, right? You know, he's a computer guy. He's not a TV guy. He's just hanging out on right. the web. And it's, like, a beautiful thing thinking back on, on those days because dial-up internet, it was so slow, but you didn't know it was slow. Right. It was groundbreaking. Yeah. Also interesting because it's a hacker in a movie you're filming in 1998. Nary an energy drink to be found. No. That's true. No, like, (laughs) caffeine. Not the caffeine, like, no coffee or anything. Well, that's why he went to sleep, dude. He should have had a big big fucking monster (laughs) next to him. He would have been fucking hacking all the night through. Cola. Well, that's what I'm just curious. Like, what was what was the energy drink situation in the late it, 90s? I don't think we really had Jolt yeah. and Surge. Jolt, yeah. Jolt and Surge were still I mean, Yeah, like soda. Right but those were in, like, Hackers, right? Like, there was Jolt and Cola and Hackers. Yeah, we'd ha- we, didn't yeah. Go- we haven't gotten, like, to pure cocaine drink, like, bang. But, uh, <laughs> he gets an ASL from Morpheus real quick. <laughs> uh-huh. um, you know, for kids at home, and that's age, sex, location. We played a fest earlier this year 
And we, I was talking to another guy on a, another podcast, a younger man, and we said ASL. I had no clue what we were talking of about. Course. See, it was so, you know, when you were talking to people in yeah. the chat room anonymously, yeah. you know, you just, you took it, you took that as like fucking gospel, dude. It's like, Absolutely. okay, this total anonymous stranger that I'm speaking to said that they were a fucking, you know, 24 year old female from, you know, New I'm York like, City or whatever. All right. And yeah. You were like, Fuck yeah. Let's keep chatting this x-files chat forum <laughs> yes for some it was gospel for some it was the password into the fucking underworld that's right so he but yes morpheus kind of was like hey wake up neo very the matrix has you yes uh it'd be great if he actually said that he's like wait who said that <laughs> sorry i <laughs> said to you I'm sending you wave files of my awesome <laughs> voice. Do you, you have a Winamp? <laughs> <laughs> cool Winamp skin, Neo. Oh, man. Maybe back in the day, like, he was like, okay. He started, like, trying to get some other people out of the Matrix, and he was just, like, calling them up and be like, the world is fake. <laughs> and it just wasn't working. I got to come up with a new name for something. I don't know. Let's say the world is the Matrix, okay? Yeah, You're sure. plugged into it. <laughs> Yeah, because my world is fake thing wasn't convincing people. Well, fuck. I just well, what did I what did I watch recently? Watch Commando. Good movie. Maybe the the world is as broad as John Matrix's <laughs> shoulders, <laughs> which Maybe. had a fake country in it. Hello, mm-hmm. figured it out. There, I love the idea. By the way, in twenty one ninety nine, Neo's just watching some fucking MOV file of uh, old Arnold movies. That would be kind of awesome. This this uh the ASL from from Morpheus here um it it uh invokes uh or causes the fucking funniest Keanu like Keanuism of any of these movies I think is it's you know the matrix has you is what the computer screen says and he just goes what <laughs> <laughs> He's got so many good moments like that like the whoa you know? Yeah. Woe that, is great, but the what? <laughs> it's hard to imagine another leading man pulling those off. No, Will Smith, happen. Johnny Depp, I don't think couldn't so. Couldn't happen. It's just he, he's he got a very... Everybody here was supposed to be here, I get that. Like, yeah. Carrie, Ann, Carrie Ann Moss, too. Like, I don't want to uh, short sell her. I can't imagine anybody else yeah. playing Trinity. I feel like the Matrix is so perfectly cast, I'm starting to believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so he gets um, uh, approached by a bunch of ravers and they Just want do Troy. Oh man, yes. I love these. I and love these people. Like they've been up for a couple of like, sorry, man, I've been fucking doing Craig for six days. It's like, awesome. Here's a mini disc with God knows what on it. Uh-huh. Yep, for two thousand uh-huh. dollars. Yes, dude. Yeah, here. Uh, it, uh, I guess this is my own personal Jesus. Uh, <laughs> well, I won't be playing master and servant anymore. And, I guess uh, the cool thing is, I hope you never let me down again <laughs> with these discs. Oh I, yeah, good tunes. Man. <laughs> I guess the cool thing is, you don't have to do the thing you do with your drug dealer, where you have to like go in and hang out with neo like yes that's so true. man how's it going how's the hacking doing awesome cool yeah because you can't be like you want to come in and sample some of this hacked information <laughs> <laughs> you just sit down put on some hacked videos just hack for a while dude i mean the matrix is clearly cool with it it doesn't stop any of this shit it's it's doesn't, true. it doesn't glitch him <laughs> although so um the, the these tweakers are like come on man don't you want to come out we're gonna Gonna take a little ride. We're gonna go watch, analyze this, <laughs> and then we're gonna go to the club and hang out and do dance. Do you think that was up? What was on the mini disc? Was just a bunch of bootleg movies? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because for two grand, man, for that's, a bunch of torrent hey, movies, listen, that's a bit much. If they found you with that copy of the Blair Witch Project, you don't know me. <laughs> you, can, you can get fifteen years for cam rips these days. You can, but look, <laughs> look, Troy, you wouldn't steal a car, would you? <laughs> I do love, uh, you know, uh, Morpheus like follow the white rabbit and like he did this guy such, I mean, the, again, the horny energy in this movie is off the charts. And, oh yeah. Mm. Uh, but it's just like, should we take him with us, darling? And she's like, Ooh, yeah. And when that happens, you're yep. like, okay, so now I'm in a threesome situation. Okay. And it's Absolutely. Not, not, a, not a bad one, by the way. Not, not, nothing nope. wrong. No, she's quite all right. Troy's looking okay. Like, if you <laughs> can get it up later, that's fine. <laughs> Looks like a man I could give a handshake to. Uh, exactly. 
<laughs> but you're totally right though, Steve, because like this woman is like sticking her tongue out, like, yeah, that would be fun. La, 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 la. Let's go club and Neo. But, uh, it's the white rabbit, just like the chat on his computer suggested, right? She's got the tattoo. Yes, yes. 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 And he, white like, rabbit he tattoo. And, and it's kind of cool because like even the chat we're underplaying. Uh, knock knock Neo and then someone yes. knocks at the door because Morpheus can see everything because he's just he's basically watching him like uh he's just like I don't know Neo why don't you check the library that'll give you the more information oh god no don't go yep. into the other room Neo you've already <laughs> checked that one before Jesus you live like this <laughs> don't you want to clean up a little bit <laughs> Jesus Christ I wish we got a little more of Thomas Anderson's apartment it's not looking yeah. good. I, I gotta be honest. I no, I know. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's the one. I don't know if the one would masturbate quite as many times in a day. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he's the one. Can you imagine the one doing laundry and mixing whites with colors? That's just ridiculous. Uh, so they go clubbing. This is the Dragula needle drop right oh, here. It's yeah. so dude, good. It is so awesome because like, I fucking totally forgot that Dragula is featured in this movie and I was rocking out. You know, I think this movie set like some unfair expectations for my life. I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> sure, my life is awful right now. Sure. I'm living in the sticks, going to high school. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. One day, crazy, sexy uh, goth clubs and oh, shit. That's sure. how adults live. Yes, yeah, exactly. And then Carrie Ann Moss comes up to you and she's like, hey, I like your vibe. And you're like, cool. That's what life's like. No, it's not. No, <laughs> no, it's no, aggressively it's... not that. <laughs> but well, and you moved back to the stick, so that's just well, that's on Because it wasn't here, dude. That's, <laughs> sorry, man. I looked around. It's like a fucking desert, man. Manhattan's a bore. <laughs> I, I, I've been to clubs like this, but I have not seen such a beautiful transition in a DJ set from Rob Zombie's Dragula to Prodigy's Minefields. Mm -hmm. Just so unbelievable That's work. You know what, Kevin? Because sometimes, man, you just got to leave it to the pros, well, baby. Maybe that was an Oakenfeld. Maybe he snuck one in there. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Fault. then she's like, you know, uh, are you Neo? And he's like, oh, are you the Trinity? And they have this kind of cool thing. She's like, you're living in a simulation right now. And he's like, what? <laughs> the, 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 this is all a computer program. You don't get it. No, I, it's weird. It's so much weirder than that. It's like, you know what it is, don't you? Yes. The Matrix. Everybody's been talking about the Matrix. Yes. See, that's a weird thing is like, and it, it's fine because Ultimately, the movie moves on with itself, but like you get the idea that Keanu has suspicions about simulation theory and like has been kind of doing some digging. Like Neo or uh, Morpheus has some lines later to him about like, you've been looking into this. I know that you've mm -hmm. been curious for a while now. And it's like because we drop in like right when Neo's life like changes, we don't have any of that pre Morpheus yeah. reaching out. That's but very interesting because I guess if you hack the IRS enough times, you're like, well, this is all fake. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that one, uh, uh, there's not much lingo in here, but one I almost died laughing at was when he's like, you hacked the IRS D base. Yes. Not database. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, being the D base, dude. D -base. Absolutely. <laughs> but there is a, you D base. You hack my D base. Well, here's oh, the, totally. Here's the move, uh, computer evil monster people. <laughs> Why not just never set this in 1999? Like, mm -hmm. start like 1700. Like, I understand, like, you know, he goes, like, they do the whole spiel about, oh, we gave everybody paradise, nobody could handle it. Like, just give them like shitty 1700s, whatever. Yeah. Then, A, information is nowhere. No, well, you know what me I mean? No, no one has computers. You're just fucking. Right. You're barely living through cholera. Well, Mr. Anderson, the reason we set the simulation in 1999 is we love the bare naked ladies. <laughs> it's also inarguably the best year for American <laughs> cinema. Just yes. cannot be topped. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you never thought your life would ever be this way, Mr. Anderson. Yes, the chickadee China, the Chinese chicken. You had a drumstick and your brain stops ticking. You are watching X-Files with no lights on. We're done, Omazon. I hope the smoking man's in this one, Mr. I'm Anderson. getting frantic like Sting. I'm tantric. <laughs> like Snickers, I'm guaranteed to satisfy. Mr. Anderson, I'm like, Kurosawa, I make mad films. K, I don't make films. But if I did, they'd have a samurai. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. God help me. Whoa, you know way too much of that song. Dude, oh. you computers are sick. 
The computers are sick. You've, you've got to stop. It's all been done. <laughs> oh, man. And that's why it's 1999 forever, Mr. Anderson. Mm. Mr. Anderson, I wanted to see if you were home, but I had the wrong address, so I broke into the old apartment. <laughs> You know, Mr. Anderson, I might as well be walking on the sun. <laughs> that was Smash Mouth. <laughs> you fucking idiot computer. <laughs> You're under arrest. Uh, but he goes, you know, he wakes up the next morning. She's like, basically like, just keep a lookout. Morpheus is really circling around you, but there's yeah. also bad guys looking for you. So just really steer clear yeah um, he says he says what is the matrix and her last line is it will find you if you want it so we should say i mean obviously uh uh lana and lily uh wachowski uh, came out as trans women after this movie was made the gender subversion stuff all over this movie is fascinating and pretty wild yep. it's just oh yeah like the whole like you know uh tr- i thought trinity was a guy and it's like right most guys do like uh you know the, even like sort of innocuous lines about like they keep like uh, Neo keeps being referred to either as Alice from Alice in Wonderland or Dorothy from uh, uh, from uh, uh, Wizard of Oz, like those kinds of right, things. Yeah. It's all. I mean, the dimensions are all here. It's really kind of I mean, smarter, because... people, smarter people than me and us could talk about that for hours. But it is, it is absolutely worth mentioning. It's fascinating. Yeah. Buckle up, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye bye. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, he's all about like finding his true self and yes. living that best life and yeah i mean the funny thing about them like the 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 rumors about the matrix and everything about that is that they have all agreed that it is called the matrix like you <laughs> it, it's not like somebody's like i believe in the matrix or, yeah what well, i believe in the slop plop and that's where we're all going and well, also you know, like, what, why would it even have an english word anyway your computers i believe in oh zero one 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 zero one but yeah. like it's, well who told made, you about our code? Shit. It, it made for a killer ad campaign. It Do you did. remember those TV yes. spots and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, what is the matrix? You have to find out for yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Well, and like literally the movie is answering that question a pace. Like it literally opens with asking, Do you know what the matrix is? What is the matrix? Right. You've been yeah. asking yourself that question. You've I don't seeing our ads. Don't Gabo really is remember. coming. <laughs> Gabo. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember the trailer as much, though. How much of the ad campaign was like, this is a movie about a dude who realizes he's living in a simulation. None of it, None basically. Of it, right? it was no. all like, um, or at least from my memory, I didn't go back and watch any stuff. But I remember like specifically the TV spots that were like 30 second things of just like, what is the Matrix? Well, you're going to have to see yeah. it. And it they was, show the crazy shit and you're like, yes. well, I'm in. Be- I mean, beautiful old school Fifth Element type of advertising where you're just like, just press it like don't don't give them no information whatsoever. Is that what they did with the fifth element? Oh man, the fifth element trailer is incredible. Go see it. Like it, it, it's like literally just like there is one thing that's going to save the universe, and it's the fifth element, and, oh, and yeah, then it yeah, just yeah, goes yeah. back. Well, we the, have to do that too eventually. Oh yeah, absolutely. it's better to do. You have the first trailer that's like that, and then you have the second trailer that gives you the whole movie, and then the third movie gives you the third trailer and the fourth trailer. But the sixth trailer, you know all the twists and all the turns. Fantastic! It's better. Oh, yeah, I think a good it's better. Way to be. uh, <laughs> the I third love... trailer for this new Matrix. Oh boy! I, 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 I stayed away. You guys I, stayed I'm, away. I'm yeah. It might make a difficult talk in this, but yeah, it basically just tells you what the whole movie is. I, I feel sk- like I <sighs> skipped it, um, but I saw something today when I was. I actually watched this trailer. It was like new trailer for the Matrix, and the the thumbnail was like a huge surprised i'm like well that's that i would rather have seen that i in the movie. yeah i accidentally spoiled something for myself today due to looking at a certain actor's uh yeah. imdb page it's hmm. probably the same thing uh but so he wakes up the next day he's late for work and his australian boss is really giving him <laughs> shit isn't he dude blimey is he ever <laughs> and you know this Crikey, boss- come in late all the time what are you doing here <laughs> Oh, I hit you over the head with a boomerang next time you come in that way. <laughs> I, I do appreciate that, like, the fact that, like, basically every human city kind of looks the fucking same. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And then don't they, they use, like, some Chicago streets names or something throughout this movie? I, yeah, they change like, street names. I don't remember. Which is, which what, is cool yeah. because it's like a amalgamation. Like, whatever they're living in is not Chicago. It's not Melbourne yes. yeah. or whatever they call it. <laughs> well, Melbourne. It's, 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 Melbourne. And it's it's interesting to have American actors in an Australia like yes. just yeah. the fact of them having being in an Australian city, it doesn't look like And American mixing cities. Americans with Australians. Just Ooh, wild, wild, wild crazy. crazy stuff. <laughs> what wild and crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. There was a kangaroo in the road. I got late. And del- he said that last time, you son of a bitch. 
<laughs> it's ne- no, ne- never that many kangaroos in a row. <laughs> oh, this guy's played knifey spoonie before. There is no spoonie. <laughs> I'm about to walk off this picture. You told me these were going to be New Zealanders, <laughs> not these trashy Australians, <laughs> these brutal drunks. Uh, but, but you know, no. that's why we love them. By the we way, do. But we we give we we give everyone a little shit. But we all love we love our international audience. Uh, Absolutely, I'm a brutal drunk right now. I'm drinking a fucking ten percent ABV. You're, you're a drunkard, and people would say that makes you a citizen of the world. Mm-hmm. The quote Casablanca a few <laughs> weeks ago. That's a good question. I mean, so like when you're in the Matrix and yeah. like you're uh, hanging out with some buddies, and you you go out to to the pub after like crunching numbers for the Matrix or whatever you do, right? And you're drinking a beer. Does the computer simulation make you drunk? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. I guess, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like, oh, like this element is, you know, this part of the code is entering his yeah. body. You have less hydration code, more, <laughs> more dehydration more. code. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And that's bringing your whole like temperature down. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're, you're just, you're actually just drinking dead people right now, but we'll just say you're drunk. You're sure, yeah. fucking wasted, Mr. Anderson. Enjoy it. <laughs> It's a thick black sludge you're being fed, really. But so that, oh, I guess that's the thing. Though, All the so choices you're do, making that make no difference anyway are now yeah. impaired. Well, it, maybe with the booze, though, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yes, we there's regular black liquid and then there's <laughs> fermented black liquid so they can get fucked up. And black liquid light. Yeah. <laughs> This is Black Liquid Ultra. Initially, in the first Matrix 1.0, there were no hangovers, and everyone realized that was wrong for some reason. (laughs) We had to put the hangover code back in, (laughs) Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, I'll bring the hangover code in tomorrow. (laughs) I would love to see, and I guess, like, maybe the slightest bit you peer this uh, at the end of the, the very, very last scene of the third movie uh-huh. when the Matrix reboots itself and the the little girl program has designed like a beautiful like multicolored sky and it's like a rainbow looking sky. It looks pretty cool. Maybe they're trying because I've just I would love to see some of what that like utopian Matrix looked like. Sure. And, yeah. like yes. Like, give me a flashback as to, like, why that didn't work. What was going on? Did we all just start, like, beating each other to death? Or, like, what happened there? It was Breath, Eric- of, the, it was Breath of the Wild, actually. Ooh. And <laughs> people got really frustrated because the swords kept breaking. That's, so why, then- that's why I stopped playing that game, yeah. Why, why do I have to keep on making chowders? <laughs> the sword kept breaking, Mr. Anderson, and your primitive cerebrum kept wanting to wake up from that. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, the original Matrix was actually modeled after Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and everybody got upset that you had to cake your character to eat and go to the gym and play basketball. And for some reason, you were always listening to ABC's Poison Arrow. <laughs> All right, Mr. Anderson, we'll level with you. We did the first one. It was the Mushroom Kingdom. It kind of ruled, but honestly, it was figuring out who was going to be Bowser was kind of a big hassle, so we decided to make people regular again. I I do like that detail because it's like, yes, life is unquestionably defined by misery. for Oh, sure, absolutely. In in many ways. It's just like, it's people passing. It's fucking tragedies across the world you it's know coming, it's coming that's to, how you measure time coming to peace with all those things if you can oh, yeah, coming to peace is yeah, so, so. <laughs> he goes to his cube uh and- which is gorgeous by the way and i understand at the time that they made this this is supposed to be a prison mm-hmm. like this yeah, is right. look at your terrible office job it's boring the the, the boss is australian and drones on and on and here's <laughs> your cube and this is such a you're shackled to this desk huge cubicle beautiful cubicle awesome. would have killed for this cubicle and walls dude not that's walls not, dude you yeah know, oh walls. the matrix walls. we've decided to Don't. make it even more miserable we've decided that open plan offices <laughs> shall exist <laughs> mr anderson oh. you know we have one of those at the burns and it is just a fucking hellscape yeah. The yeah. open concept is, office should be made illegal in the world. I When I started my job, when I was working at Showtime, it was in a cubicle almost like this one. And then in 2014, they went more open concept. They cut it in half, lowered all the walls. And I had a view of a window. They bricked up to make an <laughs> office for an executive or whatever. And they expect like 
You're Did not a black gonna... cat walk past that door twice? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, there was, you know, and there were there were tunnels under Manhattan and that connect some buildings. There were days in the winter I would never see outside. I'd go, I'd get to the train station, go underground, go up to my off. Dude, it fucking sucked. And how do you expect to retain employees by going to open concept, by breaking up windows? Well, you destroy any sense of privacy and that makes them better employees. Uh Apparently. And that's the thing. It's like, plug me the fuck in. If you can give me a blue (laughs) pill now, put me in a simulation. And all the office oh, yeah. spaces F- are better. F- I, FYI, I, I, uh, yeah, everybody is. Everybody's into the blue pill. Everybody would be happy to have a San Junipero afterlife. <laughs> everybody's into it. Honestly, at this point, we're all into it. Everyone is that, that what that uh, television episode was about that I never watched? Yes, it's it's about the afterlife. It's about a version of the afterlife. Got it. All these offices have egg on their face because you know what would be really fucking helpful in a pandemic? Walls, doors you could close. Uh-huh. Yep, yeah. but it's like no, no, no. Everyone's gonna be. It's amazing. You can see everything, and everyone's gonna be breathing on top of each other. Yeah, it's I, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, caskets have those too. <laughs> but he gets a phone. He gets a, a cell phone sent to FedEx, which rules. Uh, and it's amazing because Morpheus is like, "Look, they're they're coming to get you. Go into the next cube across from you that's empty." And he's like, "How do you know that? I don't know that." But first of all, you're like. Oh yeah, right. Janice quit last week. She just got <laughs> fed up with it. That's can great. I go into? Are you telling me to go to Janice's cube, Morpheus? That's a little well, disrespectful. There's, there's so much of this where I realized immediately, like I would be found out because he's just he's kind of vague with some of the directions. He's like, "All right, leave the cube and walk to the end of the hall." And I was like, "Well, which way am I fucking going?" <laughs> and even Keanu kind of like bumps into the agents, like, "Oh, oh, fuck! I guess he meant this way." Oh. Uh, well, I love when the agents go to his cube and he's in the one literally next to it. They're like, well, he's not in this one. He can't be in this other one. Obviously. <laughs> yep. Let's move away from this immediate vicinity. Too sweet. Well, I, I wouldn't I... want to check in to get Janice's cube without permission, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to pick up a guy at the office or something. Yeah. Like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Run of the mill. You don't expect him to be cowering in the next, <laughs> you know, cubicle. Okay. All right, off to the bathroom we go. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, are you pissing in here? <laughs> All right, I'm going to open one stall door at a time. <laughs> right when Morpheus tells me to climb the scaffolding on a skyscraper, dude, lose my number. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it, I'm glad that Neo, I mean, it shows, you know, growth that Neo will finally trust Morpheus. You would never trust some fucking creepo that you met on the internet. Like, no, nah, dude, you can make it. Just Cro- climb it. Yeah, yep. crawl out the window at your workplace. <laughs> well, yeah, if it sounds like Stephen McAddy, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne, yes, See, that's this my is, This is why casting matters. <laughs> the, bummer, the bummer, though, is like you never, like, it's fine the way it goes down, which is that Keanu's like, fuck this, and he goes back inside and he gets arrested by Agent Smith. But, like, if he fell... It would have been cool if there was a thing where, like, Neo or uh, Morpheus and everybody, like, reprogrammed something and, like, he was able to, you know, if, like, a Matrix-esque event happened right here. Like, he falls, but, like, somehow survives one way or another. Uh, I guess the Roger Rabbit treatment just bounces off. (laughs) Everyone exactly right. Everyone in his office is watching this dude go out in chains. He was jerking off. Oh, yeah, we knew that. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I I told you that guy. That fucking, the skinny guy. The skinny you know, guy, look out for the skinny guy. We all knew he was jerking off in that <laughs> cubicle with them high walls and whatnot, but his TPS reports were always turned in on time, so we kind of just let it slide. That's our fault. Oh my the God. problem is, is that he would always lock the bathroom when he went in. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's it's there's three stalls in there. Everybody has to use them. First Janice, now the skinny guy. What's this office can't take much more of this? <laughs> there's a great the like a great shot of uh, Neo being taken out by you know taken into the car by the agents. In the reflection of Trinity's uh, motorcycle, I just thought yes. it was. Oh neat. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah she's right there to pick him up. She's like, "Fuck!" and kind of rides off. And- Drives off. I love this transition shot. We see this like we see this wall of TVs that like I don't know if we're ever confirmed like where they actually are, but then like the camera goes close to one and then sort of like bloops through the screen and you're in the interrogation yeah. room with him. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know if that's like the architect looking on because the architect doesn't yeah, have those wall of TVs in the yeah. second movie. You think? Yeah, no, there's I was just thinking of was there a wall of TVs in Morpheus's loading program, but no, that was just one TV. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it must be the architect. I, I can't I mean Yeah. 
Uh, so this interrogation's going on. You know, this is where he's uh, telling, you know, he has two lives. Yes. yes, yes. Mr. Anderson, you've been leading two lives. One where you work at a respectable software company and help your landlady take out the garbage. <laughs> and another is lived on computers. <laughs> one, another one as a filthy podcaster. One of these. <laughs> oh, yep. You, you've been cursing on the internet, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> one of these lives has a future and one does not. The life with a future is the filthy podcast. <laughs> I also like in the Matrix, this old lady can't even like, yeah, oh, well, she's getting older. Let's give run back pain protocol. <laughs> like, <come on. laughs> you know they're doing it. You dude. know they're doing it. You know oh, they are. God. Activate sciatica program. <laughs> you know what I noticed this watch, and I think it's kind of a neat detail. I mean, I think it's probably intentional. The agents, whenever they sit down, it's on metal furniture only. Mm. Oh, There's no natural hmm. wood or whatever. There are metal chairs in this scene, and there are metal, like metal office chairs in the Morpheus interrogation scene. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ah, I, I like prefer that. metal chairs, Mr. Anderson. Rubber <laughs> makes no sense to me. It's better for my back. <laughs> yes, I know I'm a computer program. Because it's like the machine thing, you know? It just feels nice, I guess. Right, yeah, that's true. I, I don't like wood. It's the smell! <laughs> <laughs> So Smith is basically like, hey, man, we know that you've been in contact with this dude, Morpheus. May I remind you, he is the A number one wanted criminal in the entire world. We do have a thing uh, way back when Neo is passed out at his desk. You see like a bunch of shit running on his computer, one of which is like a newspaper headline comes up that says there is a like worldwide manhunt for Morpheus <laughs> going on. But what I really want to hear what they've got pinned on Morpheus. Whatever they want. I guess so. But like it, to be the number, he would have to be super terrorist. Well, they're, you know, it's all phony baloney. So they, I, I know. they're saying no, they probably, he's, you know, he's, he's probably written, you know, like to the general public. He's like, um, what was that guy's name? Like Eric Robert Rudolph or whatever. The fucking abortion clinic bomber. They just make shit up <laughs> when you're wanted. Well, no, I'm the, just but, saying that guy was innocent. I, 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 no, I, no. What I'm, I mean is like that might at least have some weight on how, what, what Neo believes and seems willing to believe him so easily. Mr. Anderson, we have reason to believe that your best friend in the whole known world, Morpheus, uh, did 9-11. <laughs> Mr. Osama Anderson. bin Laden, dude, that dude was a fucking bad program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he knows the codes to Zion. Mm -hmm. That's considered by many authorities to be the most dangerous man alive. <laughs> is what Smith says about Morpheus. Yeah, yeah. You could say that about Osama yeah, that, bin Laden. That French guy was funning him, too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's the most dangerous man in the entire world. Why? Well... Mostly fraud, um, <laughs> you know, international fraud. Some wire stuff, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it, you know yeah, we, we put the BTK a couple b below him, he's, actually. He's honestly, he's hacked the New York Times and he's well past his five free articles. <laughs> we need to take this bastard down. <laughs> I heard reports today. Yep. Oh, yep. He hacked the subscription to the Atlantic, too. He's been sharing a Netflix password with all of his <laughs> friends. <laughs> no one gets HBO Go for free, Mr. Anderson. You either respect the paywall or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love this Keanu. Uh, how about I give you the finger and you give me my phone call. Oh, yeah. Dude, and fucking Keanu giving the finger, man, which you get twice in this trilogy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you get it when he's uh, talking to the architect in the second movie, and there's all the Neos, like, on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, A yeah. bunch of them are Keanu just giving the <laughs> finger. <laughs> oh, well. That's what it looked like. We, had, we were going to do this either the easy way or the horrific way, and now <laughs> oh, you've man. chosen the horrific way. Dude, this mouth stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's still crazy. Creeps me out. Of course. And this is what, what's great about like building to the reveal, you know, reveal of the simulation. Like it all makes sense. Yes. But like, I just love that slow progression of like, what is going on here? Because yeah. he's got like, first he looks like he's poo with too much honey in his mouth. And then <laughs> been there. They, they, they do this weird, and that's just CGI that doesn't look so great. But then they do this like prosthesis thing 
where he they just his mouth is totally closed and he looks like fucking Slender Man and it creeps me right out. <laughs> Keanu would be good to play. Yes, Slender of course. Man. Welcome to my mansion. <laughs> Why don't you stab your best friend? <laughs> See, now I understand how persuasive Slender Man is. He's not that scary. <laughs> Uh, but then they put this horrific bug inside of the bug doesn't look fantastic, but it, it is so visceral with the belly button stuff. Yeah, like dude, this I crawfish hand- droid. No, I, I can't handle it. Yeah, this fucking little stuff. robot shrimpy thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do give I give the CGI in this movie specifically a lot of leeway because sure. I feel like the mouth stuff. That's not a huge. Eff- I mean, of it's course. A, I mean, for that for the time, it was probably a huge effect, but for now, it's not. So- and then this shrimpy guy, like... Uh, and it blends well. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I feel like they don't linger on it as... Like, I feel like more modern films would linger on it longer and it would be I, blown they out. They would literally be trying to convince you it's real. Yes. Yeah. It like, would be dancing on his fingers just like, it's first. Yeah. It's just a thing. Just fucking get over uh, it. It's horrifying, but get over it. He wakes up, which is kind of a great, great idea. It's like, they kind of, like, play it. So it's like, oh, you were having a nightmare, Mr. Anderson. Don't worry <sighs> right. about it. Which is the smart move on Agent Smith's part because, dude, after a, a guy's interrogating me and all of a sudden I have, like, Elmer's glue mouth, like, <laughs> I'm I'm going to cause a scene. Uh, and then uh, Morpheus is like, listen, we got to meet up tonight. Go to the, the bridge and I got my boys coming for you. Uh, this is where <laughs> all you my meet, Australian boys are coming with me. This is where me. we meet APOC and Switch and Trinity as well. Yep. And, you know, they're doing this cool interrogation thing. And she's like, you have to take your shirt off. Uh, Switch has a gun to him. He's like, you have to take your shirt off right now. And he's like, oh, shit. Everyone in this car is going to suck my dick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> That's so fucking awesome. You better put that gun away. There's no way I'm getting hard with a firearm in my face. <laughs> All right. I want a numbered system. You're number one. <laughs> you're number two. And you're number three. <laughs> and I'm going to go, one, go. <laughs> and you start going. <laughs> And then at any time, I'll be like, three, go. We're just trying to get a bug out of your stomach. <laughs> no, two, go. Get fucking go. A bug in your stomach, an actual bug thing. <laughs> oh, no. The, you know, I told you this guy was too much of a masturbator to bring. He's not the and one. When, I'm, get him when I'm about to go, put all your faces together. Tell me, uh, Morpheus, like, tell me again why you left Leo on the side of the road. Well, he wanted all of us to suck his dick. And I was like, No. <laughs> You no, picked a real fucking sex pervert, Morpheus. <laughs> well, the Oracle did predict that. that it would be a <laughs> sex free. It is awesome when, you know, Trinity's like, uh, you know, oh, you're bugged. And he goes, Jesus Christ, that thing's real. <laughs> yes. It's so awesome. <laughs> this whole thing, they have some doodad oh, I that like sucks the thing. thing out of here. Yeah. Here's my question, though. What is the, like, in and out policy with a belly button? Oh. Because I feel they rip yeah, this guy out yeah, of his, yeah, his yeah. tummy there and like you see it fly out and blood goes into the little canister and whatnot. Are not his guts falling all over the you, place? You're 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 gonna need a nanosurgeon in there, uh, some yeah. little bot to do like or, oh well you don't but to be fair, you don't wanna be thinking about injuries because this is what I got in my head while I was watching this. Uh-huh. When the plugs come out Imagine the dryness and itchiness and pus you're getting mm. around your holes. Gonna need a lot of Vaseline <laughs> in this world. Your new holes. Your brand new holes. Definitely lube up those holes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, your belly button can't just is, explode, right? Like, yeah. no. But, but you're going to be bleeding just, everywhere. So it's not even a real belly button, I guess. Is maybe yeah, the, that's yeah, what I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Steve. Yeah, because it's probably like, it doesn't exist anyway. And it's just your mind producing it. Sure. Yeah, so, I don't know. So they go to a ramshackle house, obviously, one of their many ramshackle <laughs> houses. And this is when Morpheus, uh, Lawrence Fishman, reveals himself. And he is so goddamn cool. Uh, the got- whole, the reveal of Larry Fishman yes. in this movie rocks ass. Absolutely. And, you know, he, he gives the whole thing about, you know, uh, you, you know you're, you're living in a dream world, et cetera, et cetera. Again, more, a lot more, if you, again, if you're a gender studies person, like a lot of trans imagery here, just about like, you, know, you're you felt it your entire exactly. life. Exactly. Like there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. Like, my God, the way he delivers the fucking lines in this movie, man. No. Yeah. Now, just to be clear, you've already tried SSRIs, correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, then we could go on. We, that, that's interesting. we could clear that. We get through that first. Well, speaking of pills, because this is the big famous red pill, blue pill bit. Sure, and he's just sure. like, 
Do you want day quill to stay up all day or night quill <laughs> that will make you sleepy? But I, I, I you go. No, I was basically going to make the same joke, but with Tylenol PM. <laughs> I like that. So too. feel free to continue. <laughs> no, but I do. I, if I'm PO and I'm like a little freaked out by this because he seems to be, I'd be like, is there a no pill option? Is there like a B just go no, no, downstairs no, you, call it a cab? You yep. you have to eat something that I'm holding. You yeah. can pick which one, but you're eating one of them. <laughs> like, can I just call it Uber real quick? You don't want the red pill and you don't want the blue pill. Fine. How about something from a selection of this little jar of jelly beans? I have? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, you were born into bondage like everyone else, a slave in your own mind. And oh. if you can guess the amount of jelly beans, you get a prize. <laughs> the prize, by the way, is being freed from the Matrix. And I'm then, really trying to cover all my bases. And then Mouse is like, nobody guesses the jelly beans on the first try. <laughs> it's 198. Wait, but he was supposed to be the one. He's not guessing the beans right. <laughs> Man, all these guys think they're hilarious. They always guess 69. <laughs> no, that was buttered popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guess the flavor of the Jelly Bellies, dude. But, man, that's a great flavor, too. You wouldn't think it would be, but yeah, that's a great good. flavor. It works so... Like, it listen, does. if Jelly Belly it was does. like movie theater fanatics, mm-hmm. here is the buttered popcorn Jelly Bean exclusive. Yep. This guy's picking it up. Getting the fat. I'll tell you what. I, I I cannot stand a jelly beans in any format. Is that right? Fuck Easter in the mouth. Why? I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> I've just the never fuck? cared for jelly beans in any kind. Well, first of all, did Steve, you have the popcorn one? I, I, it's the texture. It's the you size. Okay. It's you could just say no. It's the answer is no. <laughs> so that's why, because you haven't had the popcorn. I haven't had the popcorn. I mean, the popcorn. One. It's listen. Here's the thing. The standard issue, like, dust bowl jelly beans, where it's just, like, the green, the orange, the dreaded fucking licorice. Yeah, the grampy starter pack. Exactly. (laughs) Terrible. But if you can get into the modern world with the jelly belly ingenuity, Mm -hmm. listen, Steve, there's a lot of fun to be had there. Okay. Oh, they go on forever. There's, like, a plum wine jelly (sighs) bean. I've tried. Oh, this is the good jelly bean. I'm like, it's still, it's still like a fucking toddler's tooth. And well, it's you know what? Then have a skittle and wake up in your old fucking life. <laughs> I will absolutely. Oh my god! Oh my god! Trinity, Trinity, has anybody guessed pina colada that fast? <laughs> he must be the one. I told, he you, must I be told one. you he was the one. I told you he was the one. Uh, he gets red pilled here, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Mm-hmm. It's uh-huh. incredible how those fucking morons co-opted that this it incorrectly. Is. Stupid <laughs> fucks. Someone should tell them about the trans allegory. No, I mean, yeah, I, don't, I don't, I'm sure someone tried to and they didn't believe it. Are you talking about trains to me? You can buzz <laughs> off. It is amazing how how all the wrong all the wrong people watch this movie. It's amazing. Absolutely. Well, yeah, you know, you watch this movie and yeah, I mean, it's it's Thir- unsurprising people read it wrong. 30 million <laughs> DVDs, it's a lot of wrong eyes on there. How about that? Sure. Yeah, a lot of uh, unvaccinated DVD owners probably too. <laughs> What it what it did what this movie's about is how we should have more guns in the computers. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many guns in my regular life. How about you know they go into my computer life? Too. We need armed guards inside the internet because my kids talking to pedophiles on there. All I need is where is that white room he goes into with like the train of guns that comes through it? That <laughs> give me that train of guns and we'll fucking figure this shit out. By the way, I appreciate the fact that that is a white room, if you know what I mean. And I love just feeling a black shaft all day long. Gun shaft, gun <laughs> shaft. Oh, God, no. Why couldn't we get those get that beautiful gun space in Kuwait? Ooh. Why couldn't we could, How I'm gonna finish that? I wish I could suck that gun all day long <laughs> until it blows my fucking head off. See, Jerry, Jerry just needs a gun in his this computer. That's con- all he wants. Conservative Matrix. I love it. <laughs> it, it exists, though. It's like, oh, my, my. yeah, I just, I, I, you know, I never really bothered to look into who directed those movies. <laughs> yeah, totally. Is that a Steven Spielberg? Did I miss that? That's probably one of them Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, I found it quite shocking that the 4K disc that I bought in, I believe, 2019, Dead Names the Wachowskis. Really? Really? That's shocking. Yes. 
Mm, I think I think I have the same set. Yeah. Do, did they change that officially on the end credits of this? God, I feel that's, that's I, I don't know because I know I the watched f- on HBO Max. I don't remember how it ended. I want to say the Wachowskis. I, I'm, con- I, I'm actually interested. I want to I want to say I saw somebody on Twitter talking about they went because they were, we should say we're recording this before Matrix Resurrections, is, Resurrections comes yes, out. None of us have seen it yet, unfortunately. No, but but uh, in in the lead up to that, they have re-released Warner Brothers put the first movie back out in theaters. That's and I awesome. want to say somebody went and saw that and they were like, they're still fucking dead naming them in this re-release. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, That's wild. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm looking at it right now because uh, I just pulled it up. On my, I'm on my computer here uh, and he's putting the phone down. <laughs> it is <laughs> Andy Wachowski and Laura Wachowski. Oh, it's shocking. Yeah, they did name them. Yeah, it's total. And like, what a fucking small thing that's not hard of you to do at all. Warner Brothers home video. It's department. pretty easy to just like fix that. Uh, so yeah, this is Joey Pants. Kansas is going bye bye, <laughs> and he starts. Oh, dude, I will say computer effect that totally still gets me. The liquid mirror oh, right yeah. here. Oh, yeah. but it's all. Yeah. It's, so this good. is a Keanu thing too, though. His performance of oh, it's cold. Oh, oh, it's like yep. it's so. It, you feel how cold it is because he's, well, he's doing a good mm-hmm. a job. He wor- the, the the vacant thing that everybody always complained about works really well for this kind of character with Keanu. Yes, the thing that everybody was like, "That's a bad thing." I'm like, "No, no, no, no! It just wasn't used right. Like right. that. Yes. This is where it's used correctly." Hey, Morpheus, I'm gonna take this red pill really quickly. Could you ask that little weird New Jersey guy to leave though? Because I just <laughs> I want to be in all of my faculties when that guy is around. Hey, I'm a kid from Hoboken. <laughs> hey, Morpheus, uh, I'm feeling this red pill kick in. I don't know, man. Could you turn on some Christmas lights or something? <laughs> and ask that guy to stop yelling. You have to We're going to get you my- some fucking orange slices. Is that right, Neil? You're freaking out. Ma- man, listen, Cypher, you're really harshing my unplugging, dude. <laughs> you know, whenever Cypher is in the Matrix, whenever I see him, he's always hanging out near a horse stable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I, I'm really mystified by it. Uh, yes, the horse's name is Pi Zero Mai. Uh, uh, <laughs> that horse, by the way, is still alive, FYI. No, really? Pi Mai is still alive. Or at least no. that was three years ago. There was some sort of, I don't even know, I got a sponsored ad. That was, like, was it Was it the was Sopranos a, cast? Where are they now? It was an expo, and it was like, come meet Pi Mai, the horse from fucking <laughs> No, Sopranos. look, first of all, no, there it's is, dead. It's a backstage <laughs> switch, switcheroo. I'm there sorry. There is absolutely no way for someone attending that convention to confirm that that's Pio Mai. How did that horse survive the HBO, like, luck holocaust? (laughs) (laughs) You're totally right. Man, they were just losing horses left and right at the home box office network for a while. And that's a shame, too, because who who, 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 was that, Michael Mann or something? Michael Mann, a bunch of people. I never saw it, but it's like, Michael Mann TV show sounds good. It was good. It just had a fucking body count. (laughs) Um, Okay, here it is. There is a... (laughs) There is an Instagram handle, which uh-huh. is little, because I remember this, I looked this up, me and my wife were obsessed with it for about a couple of weeks, which is <laughs> Piomai is alive. Kimberly Ann, Piomai, Goldie is alive and has, I've been her owner. I'm Kimberly who's loved her. Piomai is 22 years old today, my friends. I feel like, oh, t- this very day? It, 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 that, it says December so. December the 16th? I guess so. <laughs> Happy birthday, Piomai. Yeah, that's oh, amazing. Pio Mai. Well, I I think horses. <laughs> <laughs> I think horses like unless yeah. you're like you know breaking a leg at the racetrack or something. Yeah, I think they do kind of live for like forty years. Well, then all maybe. all these fat Italians want to ride it. Like, nope, no, you're not allowed to. Sorry, <laughs> we want Pio Mai to be alive. Uh, so Neo, um, you know, is rebirthed out of his pod. You this know, he, goop, dude, is pretty sweet. Totally, this whole thing. It's like. It's such an incredible job at like, okay, we have this whole like, you know, weird city thing and it's dark and it's raining a lot. We got cool sunglasses and jackets on and guns and whatever. What is like the exact opposite aesthetic? Like he's going to wake up in a fucking goo pod Mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of there's millions of other goo pods all around him as far as like. It is such a mind fuck on your eyes when we change into the, you know, the real world here. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, instead of like leather daddy outfits, we have like itchy wool sweaters and shit. And that's just that. Hey, man, that's the real world for you. And looks more comfy, too. I got to be honest. It is. Really? It is a bit, it's cozy. 
It's you a, want to eat that snot? Well, no, that's well, the problem. No, that's a totally different thing. We were talking about wardrobes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it does. It does. Like a nice loose sweater is nice too. But you know, those little those little leather dusters and stuff, not too shabby. By the way, the other thing, those sequels I'm not too fond of. Yeah. He's dressed like a fucking Jesuit priest. Or something <laughs> yeah, he really <laughs> is. I like yeah. the leather outfit, you know, the leather jacket. He's got this like cool t-shirt in this movie until mm-hmm. he, and then he turns into fucking uh, uh, Robert De Niro in the Jesuit or the mission. Apologies. The mission. The yeah, mission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I love, I mean, cause the, the mouth thing in the interrogation room is included in this also, of course, so much body horror in this movie. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the Love plugs it. popping off his body. Ooh, fuck, it's great. And then the whole like, we're gonna rebuild your muscles because you've never used them, and all these needles are everywhere. Yeah, and it's like, oh, why does my eyes hurt? Oh, because you've never used them. Well, they have incredible what, line. What does I mean? God, whatever amount of years in KY jelly do to your skin? <sighs> That's a good question. He's I, probably I'm, pretty moisturized. I am willing to take up that experiment. Which, <laughs> would you even get pruny? <laughs> We're going to do these all by remote in the future. I'm not going on tour. I'll be in my fucking tub covered in KY. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question though: If you're waiting for my Trinity to show up, uh-huh. if you're a great big fat person in the Matrix, you yep. show, you, you would you you would be fat in your pod. So you wake mm-hmm. up and you're like, "Say, all right." Is that true though? I like, mean, I don't know. I don't. It's a good question. I mean, oh, a there's no fat people like, in this movie, so I don't know one way or another. You're just eating more dead, liquefied <laughs> dead people. Like you're just like, oh boy, they t- you ate a whole fucking school. Or uh, whatever. We're going to have to give this one two pods. <laughs> 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 That's true. Yeah, exactly. Like a, like an airplane seat. Oh yeah, Kevin Smith too fat to pod. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Remember his whole too fat to fly thing? He wasn't able. He was that before or after he broke a toilet off a wall? It was, I believe, bef- same I believe era. The, yeah. the flight, same the era. flight incident was before the toilet. The toilet yeah. was the pseudo wake up call, and then the heart attack was the the wake up wake up. And, and now he's moment. skinnier and than he's, Keanu Reeves himself these days. So he went. He wakes up on the Nebuchadnezzar. They're doing weird, cool acupuncture to him. Um, and I wanted to get in on some of this, man. It looks pretty, pretty appealing. <laughs> and you, you know, I would rather have someone like develop my muscles for me. <laughs> that, oh, please. <laughs> sounds, please, sounds way better. While I sleep, absolutely. That's. I mean, this whole sleep learning thing is where it's at. Plug me in and get, yep. let, let me learn fucking French for once. <laughs> exactly you would figure that's some you know that would have been kind of an interesting thing in some of these movies especially with the my god they say it so much in them two other movies the merovingian like yes yeah. you know why isn't that something oh i want to communicate with this man teach me french oh operator i need to learn french or is that like they should have done that playing something. with language would have been kind of cool also like when the or the the actress that played the oracle passed away right between they, the second and third movie yeah and they recast you know, I feel like they should have gone wildly different yes, with that recast. Yes, exactly. Because the movie they, is like, oh, she, they, she's like, oh, yeah, I could look whatever what I want to look like, but I want to be an older black woman every time. Yeah. I they mean, found an actress that had worked with the previous actress. They played either mother, daughter, or sisters in a, a very famous like play on Broadway yeah. many years before the movie. I forget what it was. I think it was a play, though. And they, they had acted together before. Huh. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's a good decision, but they are both good in the yeah, role. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. I'm not trying they're to both, fault They're both that, great. But it just would have been interesting to see them play like a t- totally different race or gender or something to switch it up. Or like a young kid or something. Or like, you know, Neo's like, I have to go see the, the, the Oracle one last time. And he goes into the apartment and like, oh, I smell cookies baking. And like he gets into the kitchen and it's fucking Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's me. Hey, Neo, look, look, it's me, the Oracle. <laughs> I know exactly what's going to happen. Don't worry. About not, it. not what you were expecting, right? <laughs> Definitely not. I've but, changed my form once again. Now I'm a Japanese clown. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some pastries? <laughs> uh, but he's walking around the Nebuchadnezzar. It, I love yep. the look of the Nebuchadnezzar. You know, Big Morpheus time. is telling them everything about it. He's like, yes, Neo, they send us cheesy movies. The worst <laughs> they can find. <laughs> but I get through it with the help of my robot friends, Neo. Uh, Morpheus, I've walked around all of the Nebuchadnezzar. This is the only locked door. What's in here? <laughs> oh, that's the riff room. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Morpheus, we got movie sign! 
That's we, right. But can you survive Mitchell, Mr. Anderson? <laughs> we have to communicate with the satellite of love. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I dare you to watch the entirety of Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. <laughs> I need the mainframe codes for the satellite of love because then I can get out of here. I can't watch Hobgoblins. <laughs> it's the smell. Listen, Neo, if you get if you get too freaked out by the Matrix, just remember it's all only a show. You should really just relax, okay? <laughs> it's only a show. Just relax. You think that's air you're breathing, <laughs> Mister Anderson? I think it's quite hilarious. You attempted to fast forward through all the sketches to get back <laughs> to the movie. <laughs> Which is what I do That's every time Mr. I watch Mr. Anderson, that. you will not be fast-forwarding this broadcast. We are doing invention exchange. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is where he's meeting everybody. Uh, Apoc, Switch, Cypher, Tank and Dozer are introduced right here, and Mouse. Tank and Dozer, of course, born... In the real world, real folk, Zion. not, uh, you know, yeah, residents of Zion. What's Mouse's situation? Mouse is, Mouse is a, a freed Matrix person. Yes. yes. He does go back in later. That's right. Eric Siska, do uh, you what? know who the man who played Mouse also played? No, I didn't even look this up. What, what? What? Abraham Zapruder? No. Oh, I, that'd be nice. Yes, oh, that was Paul Giamatti. So this is, a, but he's a, he's a little guy. It's, so. it's a name you know very well. <laughs> Jawa number five. No, close. <laughs> Jawa <laughs> number five. <laughs> but a <laughs> little bit of Barula is by my oh, son. Little bit of Owen's what I need. <laughs> Little bit of quiet guns all I see. Uh, who was it, Chris? Elon Sleesbagano. Oh, oh no. Yes. Oh, my God. Lazy Elon Which How I, fucking hilarious is it that we took it to Star Wars, yeah. though? Wow. That's I mean, amazing. It is funny to me, though, because like I, 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 this, this trilogy and the prequels are tied in that I think they're probably the two biggest examples of like big uh, blockbusters that are highly influenced by anime. Hmm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got there, Steve? No, I agree, no, I agree with Chris. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the anime is is huge here. The influence. I mean, that's what I, I mean. Like, you can do the Wachowski influence until the cows come home. Sure. The kung fu movies, the anime. Uh, Grant, yeah. Grant Morrison's The Invisibles, which uh, he might even have a legal suit against, but he never actually <laughs> filed it. Really? Uh, is that right? What is The Invisibles about? Uh, it's about a group of sexy, uh, what do you call twenty somethings that go around trying to free the world uh, from this uh, reality bending space slugs uh, kind of a thing. It's very, it's very, very similar. The, mm. the world is kind of a simulation. It's a hologram. It's not a simulation, but it's a hologram. Uh, oh. the, the main character is referred to as the one a lot. It's real. Yeah. And, you know, and speaking of the anime influence, I feel like this is also one of these movies where it's like, People started watching anime because of oh, absolutely in a way, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, big time. And then also that probably inspired future anime. But that, oh, absolutely. But this isn't a complaint. I think that I love directors that have huge wide swaths of influences and yeah. just kind of can find and condense them into a uh, into a red pill of sorts. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it gives you everything you need of those things, and like you can always point like, ah, you're ripping that off. You're ripping that off. And sometimes you legally are in trouble, but other times it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, like, look, all art is influenced by other art. That's just a 100% yes. fact. Um, I mean, you can also, I mean, say what you want about his movies. I, you know, I know a lot of people dislike him and it's completely, totally fine. But like QT is the same way. Yes. Oh yeah. You know, you yeah. watch Quentin Tarantino movies and it's like, oh, he's pulling from this. He's pulling from that. And it's like, Literally just things he likes watching. I've been watching some De Palma lately, and that dude pulled, he does QTs all the fucking time. Oh, big, Brian De Palma loves you know? him some Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's I, just I, all I, Hitchcock. I think right. I picked up a little Hitchcock. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Just huh. a little but more. At the, you know, at the same time, it's like, it hits you right on the nose, some yeah, of those yeah. movies with the Hitchcock influence. Yeah. But it's great. Oh, yeah. So yep. why I'm not going to complain. It's, no, your, exactly. your point is supposed to, you're supposed to, tra uh, like, transcend, you're supposed to, like, Transcend. Transcend your goddamn influences. That's yes. why, it's okay that you yep. have them. You're just supposed to pass I, I just, go by past them. Yeah. I just rewatched Body Double first time since college. Yeah. Holy fuck, that movie slaps and a half. I, oh yeah. See, that's I love it. I will take an influence over a reference every any day of the week. Oh. You know what I mean? Because yes, that's, the, that's the difference. Influence is something that draws you in, that draws from and 
those in the know are like, oh, that's kind of like that movie I like, or oh, that's like that book that I read, or whatever, as right. opposed to like, here's the book. You know what I mean? Like, here, yeah. This, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, or remember, you know, remember when uh, that happened? Winky wink. Yes, exactly. I, <laughs> Well, I will say, I think Body Double is probably the best movie that Bill Maher has starred in. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> What's funny is we, we did that. We did a live show in Cleveland, Ohio on uh, the Dream Warriors, the yeah. Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Also starring Larry Fishburne. Yeah. Yes. And Craig this Watson. guy, this guy who looks like Bill Maher. <laughs> Craig Watson. Yes, the better Craig Bill Watson, Maher. The be- better Bill Maher is in Body Double and uh, Dream Warriors. Never said the N-word on HBO. Nope. Thank God. Not yet. <laughs> so uh, Neo is meeting his new pals. This is when Morpheus plugs him back in the Matrix. And he's like, you have to be shown what the Matrix is. He explains that it is a simulation. Uh, everything you know is fake. Uh, and, you know, the the, the world ended you know 100 years ago uh yeah. we blocked out the sun because there was uh you know all that mm-hmm. solar powered bullshit and everyone's been turned into weird it's, batteries that is the funniest and, and like you can i mean like you know we're in 2021 now and who knows somebody listening to this like five six years on who knows where we're at but like the fucking idea that human society was like you know what them robots are getting a little too <laughs> little too uh, pushy here getting a little too violent with us and whatnot in order to like prevent the overthrow of our society let's just block out the sun and destroy it we don't need that but they have solar cells Citi- in them. citizen mr burns came up with a great idea <laughs> that's right bomb the sky <laughs> and like Stupid and that's bastards. like the only part i remember of the animatrix movie is oh, that, oh, by the way, that i will tell you the that's, the only thing, that's the only thing that Joe Manchin, Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell would all agree on, like to <laughs> to shoot a nuke at the sun and yes, block it all. Yes. Ah, God damn it, man! And the only thing left, it this is America. We gotta we gotta put a nuke at the sun. <laughs> it's a bi- It's amazing, a bipartisan decree to block out the sun. Isn't that and great? Then Kirsten's, and then Kirsten Cinema goes, <laughs> "Oh, that's a great idea." <laughs> Up. I've, I've talked to my colleagues, and I've I've told them all that we're gonna we're gonna get Solar Man, and he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna throw some bombs into the sun, and uh, and him and uh, Superman are gonna do the Watuchi on the moon, <laughs> and then uh, where am I, Jill? What's going on? <laughs> no, the president wasn't reciting the plot from Quest for Peace, <laughs> Superman 4. Next question. <laughs> Everybody knows that President Biden prefers Superman yeah. 3 to Superman 4, the Quest for Peace. And, and, Jen yeah. Psaki just wiping beads of sweat <laughs> off her fucking forehead. And sending COVID tests to people is stupid. The pandemic's over. God damn. Anyway, she's just as bad as the rest of them. Speaking what of bad... I, the Animatrix, which I included on my epic rewatch. Ooh, of everything. How's that now, what is what is the total runtime of that? Dog shit. <laughs> no, because they're all it's like, like a, little short. I think it's right? like an hour and forty or so. Or it, no, it's, it's long. It, it's it's long. like almost two hours. Wow. It's basically the most two thousands era edge lord shit you ever seen. It's like um, that Pearl Jam video, "Do the Evolution." It's like that for like an hour, and then there's like a. <laughs> noir detective story that kind of doesn't make any sense the whole runner thing i was super confused but I, like there's all these things i'm just like i don't care i remember being yeah. a kid being like 19 or 20 getting super stoned with buddies being like "Ooh, you have to watch this to understand the next matrix movie which we're all super excited about ready guys and every mm-hmm. i think we just turned it off we're like you I know remember, what but i actually remember like i was like this is kind of cool oh, back when it came out gotcha. really yeah. See, yeah. it's funny because after going through the whole trilogy, I went to like, I think check something on like the the Revolutions Wikipedia page, and wound up reading the whole thing. And like they were like, "Oh yeah," and uh, Niobe, who is uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's character in the other two movies, like does this, that, and the other thing because of what she uh, encountered in. Enter the Matrix or whatever this video game was. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. yeah, fuck off. So then you go and I looked at like the page for that and read the plot and sure enough, like there's just a bunch of shit with Niobe and this other dude that's on her crew and they have a whole fucking adventure. But like she goes and sees the Oracle at one point and that's a, like she says it in that third movie. Like, all right, I'm willing to give Morpheus or I'm willing to give Neo my ship because of something the Oracle told me. And I'm like. 
well, what's that about? And then sure enough, it was because of that video game, something in that like <laughs> bad, bad, that, bad cross medium storytelling I mean, nonsense. This is the Wachowskis leaned into the they Lucasism yes. big yes. time. Absolutely. Well, they absolutely they got high on their own supply at the end. You know what I mean? It yes. was just yes. very much like, oh yeah, it'll be this whole multimedia thing and like a fucking experience. It's every single day. If you go on the website, you'll find out this. If you play the video I mean, game, you'll find out I mean, that. Right. It does I, make sense for the subject matter, so I'm kind of like... Oh, no, I, sure. I, I, I do get it, but it's, it's, but it's a little... And I don't blame anyone for selling out. Like, get your money, man. I would do the same fucking thing. I'd be like, yeah, dude, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the only way yeah. that you're going to understand this episode of We Hate Movies is you have yes. to play the We Hate Movies video game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and now, folks at home, you don't understand some of the sly references we weave into every episode because you're not listening to the Nexus at the $8 level on sure. Patreon.com <laughs> slash We Hate Movies. Oh, shit, you're cutting that, right. That <laughs> video game has so much of consequence going on it because that's also the video game where Morpheus dies in the timeline. Get out right. of town. And now, is this, is this going to be cycled into the canon now? I get the feeling it's going to be. It seems but like they're second, just recasting though. every that, character in this new movie. But that that video game that I'm talking about takes place between the second and the third movie. But I think there's another one. Yeah, I mean there must have been. There was. I mean, there's some. There was, I've heard about this. When, yeah. when when the trailer for the when the first trailer for Resurrections came out, everybody was like wondering if uh, uh, what's his name from Watchmen is going to be the is Morpheus but younger, right? Uh, and and everybody's like, you know, Morpheus is dead, and they showed this little clip. You can find it online. Of this weird assassin guy crawling out of a vent. <laughs> I think it might be one of the ghost twins, maybe. It's a, uh, it looks kind of like them. No. And, and shoots him dead. Okay. That's, you know what, In an everybody. Alleyway. You and I'm know like, what, everybody. There's some internet article from August 21st, 2020. I'm sorry to say that Lawrence Fishburne died in the 2005 Matrix MMORPG. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, That's fantastic. Luigi died in Mario RPG. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't yeah, Dude, he never got out of that third <laughs> Luigi's mansion. Man. Oh, <laughs> fucking ate Who's shit. Who's going to inherit the mansion now? <laughs> oh, you're going to have to sleep one night in that mansion. <laughs> Got so, all the ghosts out, but now there's a mouse. So uh, he, it's kind of—I do love uh, Joe Pantoliano. He goes out of the Matrix. He's like, he's gonna pop, which is an amazing expression. <laughs> and I'm like, do people actually explode? Do people's brains explode when this shit happens? Well, I think that was right. They say at one point, like they normally like unplug children and that like when you're an yes. adult yeah. it's harder to unplug you yada yada and that yeah that is when joey pants yells that he's gonna pop <laughs> oh shit look out <laughs> shit you want the galaga ponchos when you, when you shit, tell about the matrix <laughs> <laughs> shit oh shit and this is like this whole sequence is morpheus like really doing the whole like all right everybody gather around i'm gonna tell you exactly what happened like this is where he yeah mentions the thing about the human beings cracked the sky because they thought robots couldn't work without the sun. Uh, and now there's just like fields of people. People are no longer born. They're grown. And because, you know, we're, we're, we're valuable to these robots because the human heart essentially produces energy. It produces electricity that they harvest from us and use to power themselves right is the the idea and you know which is why i'm not having kids that's right you robot (laughs) starve motherfucker yeah uh and yes it's uh we dine on the liquefied dead and it's fed back to our enslaved human like Man, it's disgusting. You're watching this little baby oh, yeah. in a pod with like the black tube. This is, this, oh. this is the most tool video this uh, movie ever gets. And I, I, I'm, I'm here dude. for it, dude. I was yes. hearing that fucking slapping bass a mile away. I am in a computer. <laughs> it is all sloppy in here. But- Did you see the fucking basses from tool the other day? Got arrested. What? Uh, uh, he was like fucking getting a fight with some dude at an airport. <laughs> okay, man. Yep. Everybody's losing. Right? I almost got arrested at the airport that one. You time. almost did. We almost didn't have a tour. Yeah, I, I called the guy a grampy to his face. Anyway, um, <laughs> this fucking. It's also. Did he play for Tool? No, no. He, didn't. <laughs> he worked for some bank. Of course. <laughs> yeah, because then you stared at his laptop the whole fight. I I memorized his name and Googled him when we got off the fight. <laughs> that and is no less insane than uh, McGruber being obsessed with the license. Yeah, well, you know what? Because I was like, this fucker, this Ohio motherfucker. 
Turns out he lives in New Jersey. They're tr- I've got the, all the information. Okay, good. Anyway. <laughs> This, Goldman Sachs, 17 Worcester Street, apartment <laughs> 1778. I repeat it to myself every night. But uh, this uh, this Feeding the Dead, st- you know, this is another amalgamation of all the sci-fi influences. It's like a Soylent Green thing, yep. which yeah. is cool. Yeah. And yes. honestly, like, especially with the lobby fight, I feel like there's a lot of Cameron going on. Oh, the, I mean, and the, oh, the whole time, the war yeah. with the machines, we blot out the sun, nuclear holocaust. That's all Terminator. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just time. Terminator with, like, the internet. <laughs> yes. Terminator, Terminator some... with a dial-up modem. <laughs> Could have used some uh, Skull Beach in the mm, Matrix oh, franchise. Yeah. Yeah. I would like, honestly, because the thing is, like, another knock against those those sequels is I want to see a more tactile, on-the-ground environment. Like, yeah. we're just in hovercrafts, and then we're in Zion. Show me some ruined cities. Maybe a set piece in some fucking wasteland would be cool. That's the thing is, I don't think, I mean, other than the the actual city they go to at the end of Revolutions. Which is like the robot city? Yeah, yeah but I feel like it is all fields. Like, I think that's the thing is the yeah. difference between the Cameron robots and the Wachowski robots is the fucking Cameron robots were sloppy as shit. Yeah. They left everything out. <laughs> all the dead bodies but and stuff are just piling up everywhere. When he gets to Robot City, that third movie, they're all like little bugs and shit. Yeah. Like bug robots. Listen, the robots Mis- are smart. They just fucking like terraform the whole thing with computers. Mr. Anderson, I will not abide an unclean house. We do not leave the dead (laughs) strewn about. Pick up your toys, Mr. Anderson. (laughs) What did we say about leaving skulls in the driveway? (laughs) Guys, guys, we... We've won the war. We cannot just leave our skulls out. (laughs) When Agent Smith has that line to Morpheus later in the film when he's interrogating him about, like, like, you had your time, and that is gone. And it's like, it's now, the future is our time. Yeah. Agree 100%. Sure. So let the computers just take over. I'm done with humans. Absolutely. A fucking computer would take a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's the, a thing. About My this- liberty is <laughs> in being infractured, uh, and now you will be unplugged forever. <laughs> I want Sa- to live. Save I us the fucking live. trouble. Uh, Kid Rock was right. <laughs> <laughs> Kid Rock could be like a robot name. With Absolutely. A periods in there. I can't wait till Kid Rock gets Omicron. <laughs> I hope he definitely passes away. Well, the good thing is human, so he will. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. And this is joke, satire, parody. I don't wish any harm on anyone. You know. Well, you're always looking yeah. for things to live on for, Eric. I'm telling you, Kid Rock's death is going to be that, you know what? a hell of that a day. That would be a wonderful... Uh, I'm waiting for that push notification, along with a laundry list of other push I, I notifications. Guarantee you, sure. guarantee you, this prediction here, we could play this in, play this in the future, clip it, whatever. Uh-huh. He's going to like lay in state. Like He's going to be at like the what, fucking like Washington Monument. <laughs> Yeah, like Lennon. No, he's not going to be at the Washington Monument. He's going to be a fucking monster truck yeah, rally. The Michigan but, Beer Hall. I'm telling you, dude, some, you know, President Matt Gates is going to have like a crazy fucking funeral procession for Kid Rock. Uh huh. You know, I mean, <laughs> Mark like, listen, my words. Over the years of recording this show, you know, there's been stuff come up, you know, like when we are on the air. Fucking, I learned of the passing of both Philip Seymour Hoffman. And James Gandolfini doing this fucking show. Mm-hmm. For once, let it be someone I hate. <laughs> <laughs> let me check what's trending on Twitter. Yeah. Hurry up. There's a there's a great bit in, in in all of this, you know, expository stuff that he's spouting out here. One of the things I think is totally fascinating and like, you know, this new movie's gonna be whatever it is, but like, man, it would be cool to see. It's sort of like, I guess how I really want to see the Darth Plagueis story in Star Wars. Like in this, when uh, uh, ne- or Morpheus is saying to Neo, like, look, I believe that you are the one, which is the reincarnation of this dude who was born inside the Matrix. And he was a guy yes. that was capable of manipulating the Matrix with his mind. And he was the guy that originally, he was the guy <laughs> that originally started freeing people from the Matrix. Like, I want that story. I want to see that sure, dude, yeah. like that awakening, that guy, like, probably pretty cool and it's yeah. kind of interesting how we get it obviously the super heavy-handed jesus christ type of thing sure. down to the judas turn but it's also like the dalai lama like we need to find the new reincarnation yes, yes. you could be the new ted <laughs> look out he was born in the matrix he was incredible ted ted all bound down before the almighty 
Ted. And now how did and how did Ted go down? Right? Like yeah. What, what, was what it, happened to that guy? Was it like it was it like a pure Jesus thing where he's like, no, no, no I'm just going to be killed so my followers can whatever. Because it wasn't Agent Smith, so like there must yeah. have been a prior a, a prior o- yeah. antagonist in the Matrix. Yeah, hmm. um, that'd be cool, dude. Like, set you could do that. <laughs> Set it in like the eighties or something because the Matrix is like a never space <laughs> yeah, time, dude. It's like yeah. the Matrix colon halt and catch fire. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, if it's the eighties, you could be canceled for doing blackface. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, we couldn't follow him anymore. Uh, he did something with shoe polish. Oh God! <laughs> something. Oh my God! But he was dating Whoopi Goldberg at the time. <laughs> that was the Canadian Prime Minister. <laughs> I was thinking of Ted Danson yes, did blackface, did. and Chris was thinking of Justin Thoreau or not uh, Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Excuse me. Uh, Maybe Justin Thoreau did blackface. I don't I mean, know. He could have. But I do. I do love that. You know that this. Ex, this exposition could be clunky, could be not interesting, but the fact yeah. that he does it within the program and shows it to you, and yes. we're moving around, we see the cursed earth or whatever you call it. Welcome to the desert, we call it. Uh, yes, we're, yeah, we're watching this all on an old tube television, yes. which I absolutely love. It's 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 very it's very striking. And then the next because again, it's a thing, right? Like even with the Matrix, right? This like sci fi masterpiece, we did not predict flat screen television. No, you couldn't. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I couldn't do it, man. He, he um, wakes up, and then this is when he starts learning all this stuff. Again, it's like he gets plugged in, and Tank is ready to go. And Tank is even like, oh, wow, I've never seen someone learn all this stuff so fast. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is the, he wakes up and goes, I know Kung Fu. And the thing is, like, I know Kung Fu, like, became a huge thing. Yeah, fine. yeah. But the fucking response from Larry Fishburne is also awesome. Show me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, the sparring program. This is neat. all. I mean, I I still can. Rem- I mean, this is how much this movie affected me watching it for the first time. Like anytime I watch it, I recall like looking at this and being like, I have never seen anything like this. before. Yes. And I understand, ladies and gentlemen, sure. that Chinese cinema, you know, was doing wire work and other people were doing wire oh, work yeah. for fucking ages. But me, as a fucking suburban little fat kid in upstate New York, was not exposed to any of that. Mm-hmm. This was my first exposure to it. This was the ground zero of that shit. And, like, it knocked me I, on my ass seeing that, like, movies could be this. I didn't. Even, I don't even think the butchered Weinstein version of Iron Monkey was out yet. Yeah. I don't think you had much of any yeah. mainstream, like, Crutching Tigers the next year. But and that I, I mean that again I just rewatched most of that I fell asleep the other night but like that again yeah, yeah. it was just like kung fu movies were regulated to like grindhouse yeah. cinemas back exactly. then but yes yeah, yeah. yeah. and TV. this was like holy fuck and not only that like this is like really polished high budget shit both oh, yeah, this and yeah. crouching tiger you know yeah how did I beat you you have the game machine <laughs> <laughs> Trin- Trinity comes up tank. Uh, so Tank, uh, you know, there's some really interesting fighting styles in the Kama Sutra. Uh, if you want to load that up uh, into Hell, this little yes. thing there, I know. Maybe. <laughs> I know. Fuck food. <laughs> I, do. I can cunnilingus. <laughs> Show the, me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a trading pro. But I mean, like this is what well, we always make fun of is trading scenes. Oh, why doesn't he tra- That's true. This is a really engaging training scene. Because and not it's a, only yeah. that, a really cool fight. And it advances. It's not just stopping the yes. movie to say, look, he learned this. You're learning more about the progression of the, the prophecy and shit. It's moving yeah. the plot. And you're learning forward. about the physics of things and how you can manipulate it. If you press, if you press the triangle <laughs> twice, you can do a <laughs> double jump, Neo. All right, Neo, here's what you have to remember. You stick this little gold piece of plastic up your ass. And then you can do all sorts of cool moves. Also... Infinity ammo. <laughs> if you all of a sudden say Hayuken, don't worry. If you run into any problems, blow into your own cartridge. <laughs> Barring that, maybe get a, a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Classic medic shit. Mr. Anderson, please use save points when appropriate. Even if you think <laughs> you, can, you don't need them, always use them. You never know what's around the next corner. Neo, you must save more than you realize you should save. <laughs> uh, Can we get the jump program? Yeah, load the jump program tank. Let's do it. This dude. is where I would fa- I'll be like, dude, I'm sorry, man. Can you drop me back off at the tank? 
<laughs> Put me in that fucking pod in the fields of people. I'm sorry. I can't I can't be jumping off buildings. I'm, I'm going to go find that Depeche Mode uh, couple and fuck them. Uh, I yeah. think that sounds like a good thing for me to do now. <laughs> this uh this is what he sees he sees Morpheus do it and this is where we get the whoa. Yes. Which fucking rules. Of course, everybody falls the first time, including Neo, right? Mm-hmm. He, he goes right down. And then we also, from this, like, because he t- he's got a little blood on his lip when they come out of this. And then Morpheus is like, when you die in the game, you die for real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that uh, amazing movie, Stay Alive. Remember that one? <laughs> it's a classic. Frankie Muniz was the best president this country had before the world fell. <laughs> The, the wrong Foster got famous. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, I mean, it's kind of crazy how much this exposition disguised as training and discovery continues because th- we immediately go into another program. This is them yes, yeah, walking, walking down around. the street. There's the sexy red headed dress or red blonde, uh, red wearing red dress wearing my God. Uh, you know, woman walks by and he's talking about how like, you know, there are some sentient programs out there that have like realized that they're programs and, you know, act accordingly and take, you know, use that to their advantage or whatever. Neo, this is what we call a thirst trap. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, so Agent Smith is a sentient program. The the Oracle is a sentient program. The fucking Merovingian in the next yes. movie is a sentient, you yeah, know, all yeah. these things. Um, Wasn't there a line in one of those sequels about like how if, if people see like ghosts or UFOs, that, oh, that's a program run amok or yes, something? Yes, that's a, yep. it's a pretty cool detail. I actually, yeah. that's something I like about those ones. Vampires, werewolves, aliens, <laughs> ghosts. I, lo- I yes. love that. I love that. That's yeah. what the next one should be um, about. It's like, oh, oh no, Neo, you didn't realize the werewolves are around, and they just it's <laughs> just Neo fighting werewolves for an hour into it. Yeah. Mr. Anderson, I specifically instructed you to stay off the moors. <laughs> like if I was the, if I was one of those like creepy ghost twins in that second movie, like yeah. I'm just haunting people. I'm sorry, I don't mm. give a shit about your whole fucking thing. Yeah, I'm not working for the Merovingian. No. I'm haunting houses. Exactly. I'm living in a castle, going ooh, fuck it. Yeah, you can move through walls. Why are you hanging out in this restaurant all day? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking carrying water for this Frenchman? I don't think so. I mean, I like I like looking at Monica Bellucci as much as the next man. That's but true. But or I, the next I, ghost. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I got I could get a photo of that. <laughs> um, I might have one. But then the next bit, you know, he shows them all this stuff, and then the next thing is he's having this is the the goop scene, and the goop scene's really rough. It's 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 when I'm like, yep. I'm totally on Joey Pants' side immediately. <laughs> oh, Im- the immediately, eating? yes. Yeah. Eating of the 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 snotty shit that it's like tasty wheat. No, it's not. It's like fucking cum with corn in it. Okay, <laughs> but, I'm not eating it. <laughs> but how did the machines know what tasty wheat tasted like? And maybe chicken, they didn't know how to figure it out. That's why chicken tastes like every. This is this, this. It's fun shit. Yeah, yeah, it's fun it's shit. I love this. You know what fucked me up? We don't really fucked me up. I've never had pizza in my entire life. <laughs> never. I, I, I thought I did. I thought I had fucking pizza to a pound, but I never had it. <laughs> Who me decided cum supposed to be salty? <laughs> <laughs> Who did decide that, Chris? What Our, what sentinel did that? <laughs> what What do you mean? I got to run the pineapple protocol? <laughs> oh man, yeah, might run to run that pineapple protocol twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I'm thinking around here. We actually get is the scene with Agent Smith and Cipher yes. going out to dinner together, which is a delightful little evening. Oh, Mister Cipher, this is the last time I let you pick the restaurant. <laughs> well, he, what, what? It's, it's, it's cool because he's not eating, so he must the way he must tell this computer waitress, "Oh, nothing for me, thanks. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm fine oh, with water." I, uh... I ate at the office before I came here. Uh, a certain someone didn't inform me they had dinner reservations. I had a gigabyte before. I was <laughs> a couple of megabytes and then a gigabyte, and I was so full with my computer belly. You must excuse me. I don't shit. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting detail is, is that Cypher's real last name is Reagan. Yes, I, I caught that yes. last night too. Which is oh, uh, I totally missed that. Yeah, Mister Reagan. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Someone who also stabbed us all in the back. I want to go back into the Matrix because my Matrix wife sucked good dick. <laughs> That's why I also thought it was funny when he was like, I want to go back and 
be someone important, like an actor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll I think turn so, you to Nancy Rig. There you go. You set. Here's what you do. You, our prequel idea of Ted begins. Uh huh. We get. Ronald Reagan as president is actually Cypher. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like this. Yeah, we get some Joey Pants like... Mommy! I I need more fucking jelly beans in here! I just realized this would have worked if he didn't get shot and killed in this movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Whoops. Um, But yeah, you know... Fuck, I would take the steak and the wine. Oh, of course. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's also... they, They put some work into photographing this steak. It looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a big honk and yep. piece he's holding up in the in the thing, and he's just looking at it. It looks fantastic. And, it's not like a tiny morsel either. No, it's, it's, a, it's a big one. Oh, yep. so good. And Joey Pants is just holding court. He's like, I know my brain tells me that this is all these aminos, blah, 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 and it's not real. Oh, but it's fucking great, isn't it? Oh, geez, I'm not on this thing. I'm not on this thing. <laughs> Uh, Mr. So, Reagan, please <laughs> compute Maroon. What do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you humans mean by Maroon? What is a Gumar, Mr. Reagan? I think my friend is trying to order the macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're a made man? Of course you are. The Matrix made this form of you. <laughs> what are you uh, getting at? Friends of uh, ours, what do you mean by that exactly? Mr. Reagan. Apparently, I can't be in your club because I don't have the right blood, Mr. <laughs> Reagan. Yeah, I want you to plug me back in. I want to be an actor or something. Make me the hero risky business. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise, the filthy pimp. <laughs> uh, Cypher's whole thing here, by the way, is Smith is hounding him because he's crooked and he wants Cypher to give him the codes to enter Zion. Uh, and Cypher keeps saying, you know, I'm telling you, I don't have that. And, you know, but I know who does. Obviously, it's Morpheus. Um, you know, I will give you his location. The agreement is they put him back into the Matrix. Uh, they wipe his mind completely so he doesn't remember any of his traitorous activity. And yes, he wants to be someone important, maybe an actor. Um, and it, it's kind of great because uh, uh, Agent Smith this whole time is very much speaking of the mafia is a guy like yes yes you will definitely get all that i certainly won't put an ice pick in the back of your neck <laughs> yeah. yeah very true oh, uh, oh yeah you'll get oh wherever you want to live for sure yeah you'll be the president of the fucking united do you believe this guy you believe this guy <laughs> we're fucking moron right <laughs> tell the matrix to get me an ice pick code i need uh, an ice pick code so going. from here we went we visit the oracle right? right yep oh my lord now this is a this is great too because I did, what it struck me about this scene is you know every everyone's like Morpheus make yourself at home Neo come with me to see the Oracle could you imagine if you were just forever called by your online screen name oh, from no. now on mm-hmm. like Steve Oof. it'd be like uh, Raging Pollock come with me <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just known as the Raging, Raging Pollock, Pollock. For, forever man. Yes, yeah. I have finally met the one. Please welcome Raging Pollock. <laughs> Dr. Fate 1983, come forth. All right, he is the one. Big nut swing us. <laughs> Hamhock 187, right this way. Which is a dude I legitimately text, uh, uh, chatted with on X Files AOL chats. Oh no, nice. Hamhock one eight seven. Oh, I hope he hears them. Oh wow, I'm, uh, <laughs> oh wow, it's the legendary hacker XOXO baby girl sixty nine XO. Yeah, that is a thing, right? When you see mm-hmm. like bots create accounts on Twitter or whatever, and them handles are just like John and then a bunch of numbers. Uh-huh. At least back in the nineties. We had some thought out oh, handles, yeah. some XOs and what have you. A lot of sixty nines. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, it's if it was nowadays, it would be much. Uh, oh God, I I'll follow you anywhere. COVID free sperm Meister sixty nine. <laughs> well, no, there'd be so many like. Wait, wait, hold on. Which one, are you? Super Patriot or Uber Patriot? <laughs> Both of which are scary. <laughs> Either way, you're unvaccinated. <laughs> so your name's so your name's just January six yay. <laughs> uh, I love a uh, spoon kid. Oh, I ain't no spoonies there. <laughs> That's the best way to do it, right? You just pretend the spoonie ain't there. I just you move. can bend anything, or you realize it's nothing. 
That's all, playing spoony nothing. <laughs> all you have to do is realize the spoon is a pudding, as everything <laughs> is a different kind of pudding. Therefore, you can manipulate anything. Spoon pudding. Whoa. <laughs> Mind you, I'm talking about the meat pudding. <laughs> the spoon's got the consistency of pudding. <laughs> Whoa. Crikey, he's playing spoony pudding already. <laughs> I mean, that it is a great part, showing that, that there is no spoon. I, I yeah. This movie fucking hits every fucking scene, pretty much. Absolutely. Have you seen anybody play the spoonie pudding that quick? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've been in Trinity. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the Oracle's basically like, you know, listen, Neo, here's the deal, man. I don't think that you're the one. By the way, uh, Morpheus is going to like sacrifice himself to save you. Uh, and, you know, one of you is going to die, man. Neo, you got to make a choice here, Neo. Uh, and that sort of like, kind of carries us into yeah the latter part of the movie the, and oh, what yeah. i love about the latter part of this movie after this it's like we are just going for broke we are doing yeah. it man oh yeah yeah it's, it's because it, yeah it, it, it becomes a huge like the there's so much exposition in the middle again i think it's done related really interestingly but it is yeah. very much uh fucking action set. there's so much action at the end because this is when uh pants turns on everybody and yes you get your deja vu thing, which is, it always bugs me because it's not deja vu. Like seeing the same animal walk by you twice is not yeah. deja vu. Deja vu is like, oh, I felt like I dreamed this last night as opposed to like literally yes. watching something happen twice in a row. You looked away. <laughs> what you're talking about is looking away. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that the same cat? Or a different cat. I looked away. I don't know. Oh, shit. I guess that's fair. But man, Steve Sadak, you can always count on him to be the word police. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Anderson. I believe words matter. <laughs> Deja vu was not a correct usage here, Mr. Anderson. You simply looked away. Syntax is important, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> it is a cool concept that like when you have any maybe not deja vu, maybe you see something twice or something weird or out of place. Yeah. That it's them changing things. I think it's a cool concept. Yep. Yes, totally. It happens when they change something. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. So um, let's make our way back up to where we were going. Oh, did we, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, wait, Neo, did you see Mickey Rooney? Yeah, I think I did. Well, every time they change something, Mickey Rooney comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how's it going? I think they changed something again. <laughs> oh, weird. I saw Mickey Rooney. <laughs> but then I saw him again. Hello. Jimmy Gillikers. Jimmy Gillikers. <laughs> he kept getting smaller and older looking oh, every weird. time he passed by. Oh, weird. The, the guy's like four feet tall. Who's four feet tall? Did you see Mickey Rooney? I believe I did. <laughs> oh, my God. I saw Mickey Rooney. But when I saw him again, he had a bunch of fake teeth in his mouth. I think it was that fucked up character from Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> oh my God. You only see Mickey Rooney when they change things. <laughs> the Sentinels are coming. Mickey Rooney's here. I saw a giant Mickey Rooney from that weird Twilight Zone episode where he's a giant <laughs> in a tiny room. <laughs> uh, but yes, they're going upstairs and they realize that, uh-oh, they're fucked. The, yep. the, cur the window is now a bricked up wall. Uh, and they're they're like escaping through a weird vent thing because all the agents are getting them. Like they're like climbing oh, this, through the this wall. Is interesting. Yeah, he, yes. Uh, Morpheus calls like I calls tank or whatever. I need the nearest wet wall, which means the plumbing is there. So I guess it's easier to climb down. Which is an interesting parallel with in Revolutions. Uh, Naomi goes through the essentially the plumbing of the world left over. That's oh, totally yeah, right. she she pilots the ship back through like a, a plumbing duct or yes. something. Yeah. Um we should say also mouse, rest in peace. This dude gets fucking oh, iced yeah. right oh, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So goddamn hard. So hard. I mean I love Farewell, that. sleeze back and out. <laughs> this is what happens though, you know. He's he's the guy that's sex positive, so we gotta kill him <laughs> yeah. first. I mean, that's in any other movie, and Eric, I'd, I'd agree with you, but this is the horniest movie ever made. Everyone's sex positive. <laughs> Very fair. Everyone is Very sex fair. positive. Uh, I do love, he's got like these huge Duke Nukem guns that he gets in yeah. the, but he oh, still gets annihilated yeah. anyway. 
Dude, this guy gets like a hundred bullets right mm. in the chest. It it's kind of great. Uh, Run uh, Sony Corleone protocol. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> And, you know, I even just love these shots we have of, like, these SWAT dudes walking around with the flashlight guns. And yep. it's like, oh, is that a cough? And just moving the... it. The, the movie fucking whips, man. It's, it's oh, fucking yeah. great because I think it's... Uh, is it Morpheus that sneezes? Someone sneezes. A cypher, which is like, yes. is it a giveaway? He does get, like, dust kicked down on him. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And it's kind of awesome because you have that one SWAT guy and he's just like, they're in the walls yeah. and you know, he goes to shoot it and they all start like dropping down I love the Larry Fishburne like and he like <laughs> yeah. throws himself through the wall and it's tackles awesome. this dude yeah. it is interesting to watch I mean like the obviously like I, I do think the Wachowskis were really conscious of hiring black actors for a real reason and like this scene between Morpheus and Agent Smith has so much like subtext dripping with it including the ending when all the dudes come in with nightsticks and beat him down you know what i mean it's right take yeah, him and then it yeah. just becomes that beating session well it's rad right because remember what larry fishburne uh, yes, morpheus yes. you know says to him he goes to agent smith he goes you all look the same to exactly me. I'm like fuck yeah uh-huh. dude you know, my, fuck my yes. new york audience really enjoyed that and they i remember oh, that right. uh yeah <laughs> Uh, but they are they are fighting in the bathroom from sure. Saw, by the way. Uh, which yes, is, that's true. <laughs> uh, Cypher comes out of the Matrix, uh, and he shoots Tank with this laser. Straight up kills poor Dozer immediately. Yeah. That dude gets iced. No! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then this is when he starts unplugging people. Oh, it, dude, yeah. but we're, we're first A-Pop. we're getting it up. Up in Trinity's face, Oh, man. yeah. He's, like, smelling oh, it. Oh, Creep City, oh, dude. you're a beautiful woman, Trinity. Ooh, it, I was I in love, love with you forever or whatever. Yeah. And he's oh. just tired of hearing all this stuff from that jag-off. <laughs> I love that he says j- Morpheus is a jag-off. You know, I've, uh, I've, been, yes. I've been looking at your Instagram forever, Trinity, and now I'm touching you. <laughs> uh, A-Pog, Remember the we- Facebook pokes, <laughs> APOC, we hardly knew you. Oh, this yeah. dude gets unplugged with not even a fucking final line. <laughs> At least Switch gets the classic, not like this. Oh, yeah. Dunzo Switch. Sorry about that. Um, and then, yeah, Steve, I think this is your favorite line of the movie. Which is what? When, oh, when oh, it's revealed yes. that tank, tank has lived a little bit longer. I like it enough. No, I don't. Because, like, there's this great thing about, like, if, if, he, if he was the one something would strike me down and dead and blah 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 i would not right. be able to unplug him which i'm about to do right and he's like i don't believe it <laughs> believe it or not you son of a bitch you're still gonna burn it's so my, my audience good. went fucking ape shit nuts at that I moment bet. i swear to god oh man god i wish i had seen this with an audience I don't remember all the audience reactions, but it was a packed house and mm-hmm. everyone loved it. I, I remember seeing it in the morning and it wasn't packed. I, like, uh. There was only like maybe like three families in my when I went to see it. Families? Well, yeah, it was like hmm. a, they took up the whole row. Well, I mean, maybe they weren't together, uh, but it seemed like they were. Well, Mother, uh, that was a pretty horny movie for 11 in the morning. <laughs> uh, don't know if I like that one, Mother. Uh, <laughs> let's go home and fuck. I mean, go to church. <laughs> Think you would ever be into a uh, Trinity cup? No, I think I could uh, get down with that. Uh, but yeah, somewhere around here too is where Smith is talking to Morpheus about like the first version of the Matrix didn't go so well, you know, because it was a utopian kind of thing and people didn't buy it, you know. So like they realized after some trial and error that the way to make the Matrix work was to have things like human suffering and violence and all that stuff because it made it more believable. What our problem was is our first moderator that we put in charge of the Matrix was uh, well his username was Small Beans and he just (laughs) wanted to be called that all the time. That's all he would be called is Small Beans. So nobody respected him. You'd have to call up Small Beans (laughs) to get anything done Mr. Anderson. Have a plumbing problem you have to talk to a man named Small Beans. You think you can win Small Beans but what you don't know is I've already won. (laughs) Yeah. This like this interrogation scene between Smith and Morpheus is great because we get the I've been studying your species, and it turns out you're not actually mammals, because mammals tend to find an equilibrium with the environment. But you, but you humans, you spread, 
multiply, consume, and then move on to the next area. The other thing is that has this uh, pattern in on the earth is a virus. This this. Yeah. This post has a million upvotes on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fucking. We're not mammals, you know. We're a virus. It's such a good, like, a, a fucking computer, like, philosophizing. It's, it's, it's yeah. wonderful. And his weaving is 100 He's 100% correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I agree with him completely. Um, and you're right, Steve. Hugo Weaving is fucking great. This Just to be the comic book guy, there's a. Because uh, I, was, I was, was looking this up today because I knew that Grant Morrison had a case. That speech is almost word for word in the Invisibles, but it's cities, and not humans. It's like cities are oh. in, it's a city disease. Anyways, who cares? But just mm. geez, was I he on vacation when the fucking movie came out, or what? <laughs> I think he was just kind of cool with it. You know what I mean? He was just like I. He was like I would like them to acknowledge it, but they never will. So whatever. Uh, I got my fancy car. Got my gold house. <laughs> what else can I want? Exactly. <laughs> Grant Morrison. Uh, uh, we also get the like the whole like I hate this place. It's a zoo. It. It's the smell, if you, yeah. if if that is even such a thing. And he grabs the sweat off of it, and pushes it. It's just so. I mean, Hugo Weaving is just tremendous. I could movie. taste your stink. I feel infected by it. One thing I've never really understood is why is professional wrestling still fake? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, if they, they, why would someone in a simulation? pretend to be wrestling even if pain didn't actually exist but although the pain still does exist of course mr anderson oh my god what the fuck you know where the <laughs> real wrestling is don't you it's on espn4 <laughs> <laughs> that's right morpheus not only am i trying to hack your brain but at this very moment I'm providing cable television access all over the Matrix. <laughs> and what do you think of that, Agent McMahon? <laughs> You're fired, Morpheus. You can't. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, so they are, Smith is actually trying to basically hack Morpheus's brain to get these codes to, you know, enter Zion or whatever. And this is here we go. Neo's like, let's fucking do it. I'm going to go save Morpheus. Let's go back in. Trinity. I like Tank's idea just killing him. Oh, yes. <laughs> sure, yeah. Like, yeah um, it's the only way to be sure. Unplug. That's right. <laughs> and he's like, and then I'll be captain of the ship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Captain Tank. I like the sound of the... We should probably kill him. <laughs> yeah, ice him. No reason. Trinity is ahead of him. Oh, that's right. Yes. There's a good moment where she's like, well, you know, as the senior officer, I am going with you to help. Yeah. As you know, um, I'm a senior officer because my sweater is looser than yours. Um, that's how you can tell. That's the ranking system. Yeah, the tighter the sweater, the lower on the ladder you are. <laughs> Ooh, that's a roomy uh, sweater. This is it's a roomy sweater, hair Captain. <laughs> this is, of course, the famous, uh, you know, lobby scene. Oh, yeah. Just exquisite, top Apple's to bottom. Down. Good use of slow motion after being fucking a uh, 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 slow motion poisoned by fucking Zack <laughs> Snyder. All of a sudden, yeah. I can like it again. The Wachowskis use it so well in this, and even in in, in the other two movies too. They just they, yeah. they know how to use it. It's well because that's that's the thing. It's like Snyder was obviously he's don't worry, Chris. He's seen this movie. Um, oh, you don't say. Uh, so I mean, like that's where that comes from. But they were coming from. A position of I don't know it's it, it and obviously again like anime slow motion all that stuff like Ninja Scroll the action is slow motion all that stuff like they've seen those movies but at the same time like it just this scene is so well choreographed yeah Incredible. but it if really it is. if it is influenced by Ninja Scroll I'm gonna have to knock this movie down <laughs> 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 they have a similar lobby fight and I th I think it's the third movie where the dudes go upside down and they're standing on the ceiling yes and our characters yeah, yeah. are like on the on the ground still and they do a lot of cool stuff so um, another yeah. great thing like this lobby fight man like the the trinity like kick this like this kick shotgun flip around move she does <laughs> yeah it's fucking great i do totally, i love the dude. idea it's like okay so Anyone can potentially be an agent, and the only way to make sure that they're not going to be an agent is to murder them. And they're just little, sure. they're just little people in goop sacks, so I don't give a fuck. Let me so just light die. these Who people cares? up. Yeah, I, you know, because I think here's the thing, right? Like you murder mm -hmm. just or some random old matrix person, like 
at the end of the day, you're taking food away from the robots. So. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Morpheus so it's still, you know. Gives him a, like a license to kill in one of those loading contract constructs when he's shown it, like all the people commuting and the lady in the red dress. Yeah. He says like these people will like fight to the death to defend the system. Right. Yeah. They, they, they will turn on you at any second. Yeah. Like, that's how this I, program so works. So you got to kill him, dude. It's pretty shocking. This movie didn't inspire more mass shootings because like, well, it inspired <laughs> Columbine. It, it, Does that help? Uh, that was a, a month that they were definitely, you know, it, they were in the, do you think they already had those uh, <laughs> dusters? Yeah. I mean, the dusters, the, the fashion was part of it. But I mean, it's a perfect psychopath ideology, though, right? It's like everyone yes. is fake but me, and the only way I can That's show true. them that is to shoot them in the fucking head. That was, I mean, that was, you know, cut to this year. The Rodney Asher documentary "Glitch in the Matrix" comes out. The harrowing yes. sequence in that movie where it's fucking Matrix kid mm -hmm. who talks about yeah. how he was like fucking convinced that he was in the Matrix. He watched the movie <laughs> a bunch of times. He was obsessed with the soundtrack. Yeah, dude, I'm in Star Wars right now. Yeah, and he murdered his fucking family with a shotgun. He murdered his parents with a shotgun. What, to free them from the pods? Or? No, because it didn't matter. Because yeah. they were indeed well, Matrix Dude, people. All it fit. doesn't matter without the Matrix either. It's just I hate funny. to break it to everyone. It's kind of funny. Life is meaningless. Here's the thing. That dude and all the fucking psychopaths like him out there and all the maniacs that believe in simulation theory. Yeah, whatever. I don't like him. Here's the thing. If you're using the Matrix as your like the 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 crux of your thesis for all of this, mm. why would this simulation that you believe we're living in create basically an explainer <laughs> to show you how to bring down <laughs> Great the question. system yeah, that you're yeah, living in? And yeah. why would that also make hundreds of thousands, so, hundreds so, of millions of dollars as well? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If there was any justice in this actual simulation, Steve, the Matrix would have failed at the box office and there wouldn't be three sequels. And here's your problem here is you're trying to be logical. Mm. Oh, sure. That's, oh, big uh, mistake. That, yeah, oh, see, does, the yeah. problem is this kid should have been watching Fight Club and shot himself in the head. <laughs> Would have saved his parents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but also here, so we are, we're arming this huge bomb uh, to, to rescue Morpheus and everything. This is, we got the bullet dodge happens on the roof of this building. Now this bullet, the bullet time thing. Now that influenced so oh fucking my, we're much. We're still doing it. it. Was I feel like we're yeah. still doing it. Huge, huge. Video games, I think like what, that video game Max, Max Payne, Payne, Max Payne which is a movie it. now as well. A, a movie 10 now, years in ago. 2006, I think it was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> then we should do that eventually because Mark we Wahlberg is... Well, wasn't the conceit in the game... I never played the game, but wasn't the conceit I, I that you, one just, of them. you had to get high and that's what made you do slow-mo? I think there was something about that, like you were tracking down like this drug Valkyrie that was being spread around the town. Oh, this was in the Max Payne game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just mm -hmm. always thought he was like an assassin of some kind. He's like a detective and he's like his family or baby got killed. Yeah, he always hears a crying effect. baby. Yeah, yeah. There's kind of a weird half dream, half reality. I don't, oh, okay. I don't really remember much else about the game at all. And I saw the movie once, but I don't remember it. Yo, bro, the socks lost and I see everything in slow motion now. <laughs> oh, fuck, bro. I better kill my parents. <laughs> Thanks, Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> um, I love the, you know, Morpheus running out, Larry Fishburne running out of this window to jump onto the helicopter. He gets shot in the leg at the last second and stumbles and falls out the window. Keanu has the great, he's not going to make it. And this, like, the jump grabbing of both oh, yeah. of them. I mean, this whole thing, which inevitably leads to, like, the helicopter kind of crashing and Trinity's going to fall and he's holding the fucking, you know, fire hose and everything. Like this whole so thing. Good. And God then damn. when the helicopter hits the building and it's like a wave. Yes. yes. I'm like, oh, the Matrix has to catch up and make this tactile and make it glass. <laughs> no, yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. When you yeah. have too much information at once, you ever do that in a video game? It's just like everything kind of gets a little glitchy. Mr. Yeah. Anderson, give me two seconds while I load. <laughs> Buffering. Load. Buffering. Load. Oh, you can't you can't just get to you didn't open that part of the map yet, Mr. Anderson. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, do you need me to repeat that? <laughs> yes or no? He must truly be the one if he has that hang glider and can go to the other little landmass here in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Press A to talk to me, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I find it unbelievable that your sword hasn't broken yet. <laughs> it's honestly why I stopped playing that game. Uh, Same, it's, yeah. It's no, I have not it's gone back best. at all. I kind of don't best. give a shit. Oh, <laughs> it's the best. best. 
uh, they rush Morpheus to the next uh, available exit, which is uh, a phone booth in a subway station. This is the first time you actually see what it looks like when someone comes out of the Matrix, which I think is very cool because Larry Fishburne turns into the secret world of Alex Mack and it's fucking <laughs> totally awesome. Uh, and they're trying to uh, get uh, Trinity and Neo out. And uh-oh, Smith uh, possesses this like homeless dude who's sleeping in the subway. Uh, well, and you get this is you get the big Mr. Anderson but she's, right here. But Tr- Trinity is like, Neo, I just wanted to tell you something. And I'd be like, you know what? Why don't you tell me back on the ship of the Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> when we're both? <laughs> yep. You know what? Like we've, exactly. we've, we've, had, we've all had a big crazy day here. I can't totally. believe that actually worked. Remember that helicopter thing? That was wild. Let's talk about that all on the ship. Absolutely. Yeah. Hang up the fucking phone, <laughs> pick it up again, and get the hell out of here. Just go already, lady. Move it. <laughs> Have we even talked about Cypher being uh, a sneak trying to kill us? No, no we haven't. <laughs> so, yeah. We never fucking unpack that, really. That's true. We, well, when, when, when Trinity gets to the ship, she, like, checks in with Tank and, like, oh, you're hurt. And, like, a dozer, and it's like... Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. probably shouldn't have asked. Don't go asking about Doze. Ooh. Ooh, Doze is on grave. <laughs> now, what was the deal here, Cabin? You were saying that there was a reason why the dude who played Tank didn't come back because it is sort of left as like, you know, like it or not, you piece of shit, you're going to burn. Because the sequel, we get Link instead. That's, I hear it was a Terrence Howard situation where he asked for like three mil. Oh, for the second movie, and uh-huh. Tank was going to be a major character. Yeah. And like we are not fucking paying you three million dollars. Get the fuck out of here. We will pay maybe, I guess, maybe five hundred thousand to Hayden. Uh, what's uh, Paranow? Harold Paranow. Harold Paranow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, uh, if you're in the biggest movie in the world, you start strutting your stuff a little bit. That's true. true. I mean, you know, I, it's fair to him to try for it, but. It, it sucks that he got excised because I thought he, he was a nice presence. Yes, he's, yeah, he's no, very he's charming. Totally great. I, I mean, I love Harold Perrineau also, but like, you know, dude playing Tank is great. It, there was a similar thing actually with that character Seraph from the other two movies oh, really? where Seraph was written for Jet Li. Ooh. And Jet Li was like, sounds cool. Pay me exactly what you're paying Keanu Reeves. And they were like, nah. Nope. Well, Keanu's the star of the movie and you'd be playing a supporting character much yes. lower on the ladder no yeah <laughs> and then this other dude came in the guy that plays Seraph is fantastic he fucking totally fantastic. rocks ass though so it, it, it worked out okay the Neo Smith subway fight we don't have to get into too much of it oh, except I really love it's a great fight but Neo gets in the Johnny Cage shadow punching <laughs> yes yes god damn it looks cool and like the, he's working the ribs the whole thing where he throws them on top of the fucking up to the ceiling and then they go down the train is happening yep. there's just that is the sound of inevitability mr anderson the sound of your own death god damn so good he's just so good in hugo this weaving is amazing mr and anderson like, i finally reached a boner by pushing you down on the <laughs> ground i had no idea that you humans did this this is exciting, <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> he he became unstoppable, like because like and it's also just a benefit of all these productions filming in Australia or New Zealand. Because yes. yeah. then he got Lord of the Rings after this. Oh yeah, what a, what and a it's run. like this is a great example of like someone popping when they're already kind of older. Oh yeah, yes. oh yeah, oh big time. He's yeah. got that yeah, really yeah, interesting yeah. looking face, and he's using it. I mean, look, it, it would be it's so easy to do the I'm a robot. I'm doing an absolutely yes. disaffected yep. thing. But everything he does drips with disdain in this really yep. interesting way. Yes. Totally. And, and makes me want to go back and check out Reckless Kelly again, the Yahoo yeah. series film <laughs> where he plays like an evil business guy. Very similar mannerisms. and He's always dripping. It's great. Mm-hmm. You know, the like, movie's not great, but he is great. You know, you I know, mean, the movie might be good. I need to go back. It's not good. I promise you. <laughs> what? I haven't Yahoo even seen it. I, is I great. fucking promise you. Here's the thing. I <laughs> I love like here's you know you know how like iconic of a performance it is. By the time you get to that third movie, where that dude is playing a guy who's been like hacked outside the Matrix by Agent Smith. Yes. And the way that they telegraph that is this dude. I have to say it's silly, but. The actor has a really solid impersonation of the Agent Smith inflection yes. and everything like that, and it's like you're uh, you're modeling it that way because like what you know he did was so fucking iconic 
and it makes the whole character that the only way, the only thing you have to do to telegraph that to the audience that this guy is possessed by Smith is just have him mimic the, well, the exactly. delivery of the lines. They do a beautiful thing in the beginning. They, uh, the, his Australian boss in The <laughs> Matrix also talks exactly like Agent Smith. Oh, yes. Oh, does he? Yeah, he, he has a very specific... Oh. He, he says Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, he said his name. He said the thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, Smith kills yeah. him, and there's also, by the way, sentinels coming. And the only way to kill a sentinel is with this EMP. But if they do that, Neil will be stuck in the Matrix for sure. Mm-hmm. Right. The chase from the train sequence because he jumps. Oh, that's in, right. And the Mr. Chase- Wizard, get me out of here. <laughs> the chase is fucking amazing. Just to touch on it briefly, like when you have, he runs through some, he's doing like Ferris Bueller running through people's <laughs> kitchens and shit. <laughs> and then it's like the old lady turns into Agent Smith and throws the knife at him. And it's just rat a tat tat. I love that yeah. scene. Mr. Anderson, you were late for work for nine times. <laughs> 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 oh, I wanted a car. My dad got me a computer. <laughs> now I'm a hacker named Neo. Oh, so that's what it's like in that family. <laughs> Mr. Anderson is a righteous dude. <laughs> you have Trinity out in front of that school. Another thing. You know what? You uh, you get out there, too. I want to have a word with you. <laughs> you are, How are you supposed to pick her up with Agent Smith there? Mr. Anderson, you are not the sausage king of Chicago. <laughs> My database confirms that Abe Froman is long dead, Mr. Anderson. Uh, and we already mentioned, by the way, that he's still plugged in, and the only way to stop these Sentinels is with an EMP. Yes, but yeah. if you, if you blow the EMP, it shuts down everything. And if Neo is still jacked into the Matrix when the power goes out, he will get killed. Once he gets shot like 10 times in the chest by Agent Smith while running for this this phone, I'd be like, all right, let's uh, let's do that fire, EMP. Fire up the- <laughs> let's save the living room if we is, could. Is totally. that some Sentinels I hear upstairs? Let's do oh, it. Yeah, they are. They, the Sentinels are in the bathroom washing up before they're about to murder them, basically. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but this is Carrie Ann Moss's big scene, and she, she fucking kills it. You know, this whole, like, I didn't tell you what the Oracle told me, which is, like, you know, that I would fall in love with the man who is the one, so if you're the one, you can't right. be dead, and you better wake up wake up right now and my wife had a really good point last night she does sort of dumb him back to life she does kind of like, <laughs> yeah, wake up like you sleep- maggot wake up <laughs> yeah. you lowly piece of shit you're still alive it's almost like a sleeping beauty thing, yes. you know I'm, it's a little kiss and he wakes up i'm gonna i'm gonna put this cigarette out on. <laughs> i'm awake mistress <laughs> oh my god morpheus the only way to wake him up Let's do it. And Trinity starts fucking stepping on his nuts inside the Nebuchadnezzar. She, she takes a pair of her nylons and just rips it near his ear. <laughs> the only way to crack him out of this coma is to do a little ASMR. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, this agent, you know, they're in this, of course, just gross apartment building hallway. And this agent's like, yep. Definitely dead, Agent Smith. He is definitely 100% dead. Uh, and then, yeah. He oh, he's alive. Well, yep. well, well, that's well, uh, my mistake there. <laughs> gets uh, back up. The bullets fly and he stops them. Pretty fucking sweet. He it's, just goes, yeah. no. And he sees in code. Yep. Which is something. It fucking rocks. Stop. In the name of love, <laughs> there is. I I feel like, and and you would be you would be totally right to have beef with the schmaltziness of it all. But I, I think it works. I kind of really love the shot of like when she kisses him, sparks literally fly oh, yeah, out yeah, of like yeah. consoles on the Nebuchadnezzar. It's, it's cool. just, it's cool. it's, I'm totally with it's it. It's one of those you know? things where it works in this movie and then and latter in those latter two movies, I'm not so into it. And I just, yep. I feel like this movie just really hits all of these notes pitch perfectly. Yeah, and absolutely. It's, it's this such movie, a curveball that it has to work. And the other ones just kind of are, feel lazier. Because this movie's like a lean, mean, like we're doing the hero's journey. We're hitting all these beats. And then the second and third movie is like we're doing weird, expanding world building, which could work, but it kind of almost doesn't, it doesn't feel like the magic you had here. Well, yeah. what, what I think the Wachowskis are, are maximalists. They've gone from being pretty like both Matrix and Bound are pretty like 
curtailed movies, they're pretty restrained. Yes. I mean, this costs what, sixty million to make, which is amazing. It's absolutely insane. No, it's yeah. sixty million something dollars. Like 60, 63 million, oh, something shit. like that. Um and I, 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 but as they've gone on, uh, and I, is it Lana who's directing? Yes, L- 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 Lana is the director, of, and and Lily seems to be not like, involved in it at all. Not even like only getting kind of like creator credit, which is kind of interesting. I mean, Chris, this is a great point. Sixty three million dollars yeah, for yeah. this movie, Insane. and then the Matrix Reloaded, one hundred and fifty million. Yes. Ma- Matrix <laughs> Revolution, one hundred and fifty million. Yeah, uh, yeah, we built Zion. Uh, we actually built it in a uh, in a gymnasium outside of uh, out of uh, but Port Heron, uh, Portland. Lot, but a lot of this is just like computer rendering, bad graphic garb. I feel like that's where a lot of this, these time. budgets fall. Yep. Although the highway sequence obviously cost a ton of money in Reloaded, and that it's the redeeming it quality of that film. I mean, I think, but that's what, like what's you lose the intimacy of this yes. movie. Yeah, as as yeah. they go, they, I yeah. mean, what I think of the Wachowskis, what I think uh, you can think of them as is uh, uh, like My Chemical Romance. Okay, uh-huh. kind of similar, like way to way, way, way out there on the emo level. But like that's what's interesting about them is that they take everything so seriously and so emotionally big, yep. and they try to put it up there. Uh, so he, you know, he gets back up. He does the great hand to hand combat with Smith. The whole like. One arm, he's not looking at him, and he's still blocking everything. He does a... We were talking about this last week with Spider-Man. He does kick Agent Smith all the way down that oh, fucking yeah. hallway. Two, two yeah. weeks ago at Spider-Man. Oh, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, Home Alone boy. was last week. Time, aye, time aye, 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 aye. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, rad as hell, he fucking jumps inside Agent Smith yeah. and blows him up from the inside, which just it's, totally Which is fucking ass. great. I love... Seeing the villain being taken down. Yes. Yep. It'd be cool to see that in the second movie. I mean, that's the thing. Instead totally. of getting a insert disc two screen at the end of it. <laughs> and I mean, the thing of it is. <laughs> like, just give me a fucking, give me a movie that works on its own and then do another sequel on top of that. Sure. The thing of it is, is like, awesome. I mean, we'll talk about the last scene in a second, but like, what a great end to Agent Smith. This is, yep. you know what I mean? It's yep. just it like, would have been. Yeah, exactly. And like, but it just, at the same time, I understand what they're playing with. Like, Oh, he's, going to become a virus which he hated yes. and he's going to start to take over the matrix which is an interesting enough concept but i feel like it's underutilized in this if you movies. wanted to do that with those other two movies though you have to end this differently because like i'm sorry you saw him explode and like when you see yeah. him come back in the second movie it's he's really like mr anderson yes it's totally weird that i'm here but somehow <laughs> thanks to you he like says like you know thanks to you like, like you part freed of him me. imprinted on him or and whatever the, yeah, yeah and it's just like okay i found yeah. the original backup floppy disk of my programming <laughs> i got a five and a half <laughs> floppy and i shoved it up my ass and rebooted myself i told you mr anderson it was important to save your files <laughs> i hit a save point before our last fight and i could redo it as many times as i fucking want that's the thing. Use video game shit here. Like, say that he respawns somehow. Like, he just kind of shows up in that second movie, and it's very weird. It would be good just to get rid of him completely. Yeah, I mean, as as amazing as he is as a villain, why are we just doing the same thing over and over again? Yeah, I feel like, and that's a response to, like, that first movie comes out, everybody's like, fuck yeah, man, Hugo Weaving totally knocked it out of the park yeah. in this movie, and it's like, geez, better try to keep that magic going for yeah, two more movies. So, yeah. yeah, but so... <laughs> he explodes. Uh, we hit the EMP. Everything goes, and it, it, this movie kind of ends abruptly. There's not. We don't have Dozer's funeral. We do not. Uh, no. Uh, no. I mean, where the fuck? Got a fucking wasteland funeral. Not great. Is all I can say. That you know what? I would rather <laughs> see that than check in on his sister's marriage. Oh, in the sh- oh movie. for sure. We are just wasting time in those sequels. But yeah, Z, you know, she winds up being helpful in the third movie, I guess. But like, I don't know. Yeah. But no, the answer's going to man the rocket launchers, Andrew. That's no, it's true. The answer was Z. <laughs> we end with this awesome. We started with a phone call. We're going to end with a phone call because this is yep. a complete movie, and there's no sequels. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, yep. Yep. Yeah, we're, yes, we're saying the door is open for a sequel, quite possibly. Right. But this is yep. a complete film because the door we are there is there is a, a synergy to the end of the film where it's him talking he's talking to the Matrix itself he he knows they're listening and it's fucking a great monologue by Ke- Keanu is. here. I know you're out there 
Like that that's the way it starts. And that line, you know, I mean, I wrote down so many of them. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to show them a world without you, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from here is a choice I leave to you. And the fucking rage has already started, by the way. It's, yeah. it's, it's the low yep. part. So because the, yep. It's just so good. And then, yes, you're the come on. Er- the come on is him flying. Absolutely. Yeah. You, yeah. You're totally right. Though, like over the phone call, you're getting like them sweet, like early Morello <laughs> licks <laughs> right there. And you know where this is uh-huh. going. <laughs> Fuck. That is a way to end a movie, man. Unbelievable. Yeah. I almost feel like those sequels, I know everyone listening disagrees with me, like tarnish the legacy a little bit. Oh. I feel like if this was a one and done, they, you know, the Wachowskis would be so legendary, I feel, more so than they are now. I know they are, yeah. but I just feel like They've, those other two sequels, it's like, what are we doing? No, I mean, this was, I, it, this was happening right at like when franchising was hitting its peak. Like, yes. this was all we were going to be doing from now on. Especially with Star Wars on doing their trilogy. And, it's, and like, ten, yeah, like 10 years later, like you see it turn into all we do. And it's it's not shocking yep. that we've rebooted it. And I mean, like that reboot looks yeah. interesting. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, Please, but I feel like good. Lana might be moving the football again. And here, here comes Charlie Brown ready to kick it. Here comes the good <laughs> yeah. Matrix I, sequel. I, Lana, I I'm going to kick the football. That. Oh, no. I agree with that. Yep. I think we're going to see a lot of these <laughs> tropes we've already explored explored again for no reason I, but, yeah, I, but, I, but I, I hope i'm wrong the one thing i will say yeah. about the at least the setup for the one trailer that i've seen for the movie it seems like we're talking about the matrix a lot it seems what we're doing is trying to do another reality bend, which is a good idea yeah because that's what this yeah. movie yeah. does right no, i agree there's a baseline of like this is what you know and it's like oh this is what i know about the matrix is that neo is, has saved everybody from the first movie and all this stuff blah blah, blah. Oh wait, what's he doing back in the Matrix? What is this Matrix? What is what are these pills right. he's taking, et cetera, et cetera? At least yeah. there's an era, an era, an air of mystery there that I'm at least in yes. at least the, from a trailer standpoint, I'm like, I am now intrigued to see your movie as opposed to like well, Zion fucking mud shit. Don't don't <laughs> see that third trailer because they'll tell you. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, no, I mean I, I don't want to know, but it's like, you know, the the third movie ends with the Matrix rebooting itself and like it stands to reason that like on a reboot like that, you would have a Thomas Anderson reboot and a fucking whoever Trinity was before she was unlocked reboot and you know, whatever. So who, who the fuck knows? Uh, but for the meantime, that doesn't come out till next week. We don't know anything yet, uh, here as we record this episode, but, uh, that is, uh, going to wrap it up. Final thoughts, Steve Sadak. We'll start with you. Uh, This movie is a fucking banger. Uh, it is lean, mean, and amazing. It's two hours, 16 minutes. You get this whole incredible story. Um, it, it is something that could be taught. It it's it's an amazing thing that it could be taught in philosophy class, gender studies class, in mm-hmm. fucking film class, or if you want to get stoned with your buddies and go yeah, like you, you can do <laughs> all of those with this one incredible movie, and that's a very rare thing to be able to do. Absolutely, Chris Cabin, uh, underline and triple cut everything Steve said. Uh, yeah, I, I this is one of those movies that every time I come back to it, it actually gets better. Uh, I, I I don't know if that's true of a lot of science fiction or action movies for me, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I came back. This was this used to be like a, a solid four. Now it's a five. Will always be a five from now on. Yeah, I just love it. There it is. There I, it yeah, I agree with that. It is a five now, and on this reappraisal, honestly, it's one of the best movies of the nineties. I would say uh, sure. maybe even oh, ever. ever made. Yeah. <laughs> the technical achievements are are here. Uh, yeah. I, I fucking love it. Um, and I'm, I, I know some people are definitely, it's okay to like a movie. Totally fine to enjoy those sequels, by the way. That was just my two cents. Um, yeah. But I think this movie's almost unparalleled. We need the skeptics, Eric. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think this is excellent. And those other two movies to varying degrees leave me cold. And that is what it is. I think there's redeeming qualities in both of them. There's a lot of redeeming qualities in both of them. But I just don't think they come together in the way, Steve, like you were pointing out, like that this first one that we've been talking about for nigh on three hours almost. <laughs> Uh, is you know it is a complete thing, and even like when you're talking about fucking trilogies, like Back to the Future or the first Star Wars trilogy or whatever, like each of those movies has an ending. Like there is an ending yes. to Back to the Future too, yeah. and then a continuation thing to set up the third one. Same thing with Empire, yada yada yada. It doesn't feel like that with those other two movies, so whatever. This is great. I will say also, I am going to champion this movie because uh, I feel like the non 
Matrix, Wachowski movies uh, get a lot of hate. There are a few of them I do not care for. There are a few of them I have not seen. But fucking Speed Racer. Check that out. It is so much fun. That's a movie that should have had three of them. You could have just had a bunch of wacky Speed Racer adventures and it would have been rad. Uh, but give that a whirl because again, that is another like visual. Holy fuck. What am I looking at right now? It's just exquisite, exquisite stuff. Um, but that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, for our episode on the Matrix from 1999, directed by Lana and Lily Wachowski. Uh, and that is going to do it for holy crap. Mm-hmm. We love movies month. Another <laughs> December is already done. Another if you can even year is it. done mm-hmm. in the books. That's right. So as we go into COVID year three, Steve, uh, <laughs> that means that January we will be kicking off the best of the worst of 2021. Uh, and what are we going to be talking about? Uh, then? I think we're, uh, we're, we're going back to the matrix kind of sort of. <laughs> That's right. I still have not seen this movie, but it is a reality bending video game. <laughs> it's yes. free guy. Oh, yep. You, you will see Ryan Reynolds do what agent Smith did way worse. <laughs> <laughs> not, and by the way, agent Smith way funnier. Oh, um, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, we'll be talking about free guy, which is sort of, it's influenced by this, but also it's definitely that Ready Player One residue. Yeah. So get I ready for that. that folks. To, to be fair, Eric, I think Ray Fiennes and Schindler's List is funnier than in Ryan's <laughs> in most things. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, and of From course, the top of the balcony, Chris Cabin. <laughs> and of course, we've been doing a bunch of We Love Movies stuff all throughout this month. So be sure to check out patreon.com slash we hate movies. We got a long banger episode of The Nexus where we're talking about Star Trek Generations which is totally great. Uh, we have the American movie mentary coming out, which was a lot of fun. Uh, the, the big, the big man himself, Obi-Wan Kenobi on the, the Glee glossary. That's right. With the animation damnation, we're talking, talking about toy story. I think that episode's 80 minutes. Ooh. There's, Tons of content, tons of hours. If you want more and, hours with us, patreon.com slash we hate movies. And we love movies on a full on episode on fucking yes, alien. Yes. Yes. Right. Rotten Ribs, Alien <laughs> from 1979. Uh, but that's going to do it for this week. And until next week, when we go back into Stupid Matrix, I'm Andrew Jupin, Steven Sadak, Eric Siska, Mr. Cabin. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.